In a world of luxurious choices, the Elementos Boutique Hotel redefines luxury. Whatever your requirements, the Elementos offers an unmatched experience in the heart of Lusaka. From engagements to weddings, press briefings to business conferences, dinner to drinks to dancing, you can have it all. Appease your taste buds and dine in style at Le Restaurant, enjoying unique bespoke cuisine served to you at the highest standard. Sip a sundowner at Le Deck Bar with a choice of cocktails, beer and wine, making sure not to miss our legendary Friday night jazz. Get the rest you deserve in our luxurious air-conditioned rooms, each styled on a distinctive element. Choose between the Baobab Suite, the Copper Suite, and the Cobalt Suite, and relax to garden views with space to spare. Welcome to the heart of the city. Welcome to Le Elementos Boutique Hotel, located at number 14, Lucasa Road, Road Spark, Lusaka, just off Addis Ababa Drive. To contact the front desk, call or WhatsApp 076 199 Send an email to frontdesk at leelementos.com. Com. Better yet, search for us on Facebook and Instagram. You'll like what you find. Le Elementos Boutique Hotel. Luxury redefined. Ah, anywho, you were talking about the suits. So yes. the reason why we addressed uh, so immaculately. Mm. So I dress like this every day. He only dresses like this when he's going to court, uh, <laughs> which, which I've never been to. And church, yes. Yeah, so mm. you say. Yeah. You know that they print names outside courtrooms now, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> for, for a month, by the way. For a month. <laughs> yeah. If you're divorcing. Wait, are you yeah. serious? Yeah, they if keep your name up too, right? So that so that someone, if anyone has to dispute, they give yeah. it a whole month to Shh. think to think I, about it. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's how like it just stays there on the board. Wow. People come and look. Oh, this and people are getting divorced, and then after a month, then they're like, okay, cool. Now, yeah. Now we're cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. They, they need to actually put that stuff in in newspapers as well when you're getting divorced. <laughs> yeah, but should you, they? You, you know, you know what I think. Uh -huh. You know when you get married. Mm -hmm. You know when you send out invites to people to come to your wedding. Yeah. When you're getting divorced. Yeah. Call, call the same people. <laughs> Maintain the same I, energy. I, I remember that happened to a friend's wedding. I was singing, I was emceeing one time, and the uncle said, You've seen all of us that you've brought here? Yeah. If you ever decide to leave this one, make sure you call us. all here. All of us again. Yeah. Yeah. Call yeah. us. That, that, that is true. I've always But I've then said you this paid for their meals. And that's, that, that's, bro. <laughs> that's, that's thankful. Not enough. only that, you yeah. know those people that post that post mm -hmm. their photos when they're in a relationship on Facebook and Instagram and mm -hmm. they're all happy? Mm -hmm. And then when they break up, they suddenly stop posting. Yeah. Listen to me. What's my, that's my camera. Yeah. <laughs> we have invested likes. <laughs> we have invested comments. data comments. You need us to tell us exactly you guys, what happened. What happened. <laughs> we need closure too. Yeah. We were in this relationship with yeah. you. Now, weren't we? Yeah. You don't just ghost us and leave us like that. And then they do it, uh, respect our privacy. No. <laughs> <laughs> our respect was privacy. Uh, Your whole hey, relationship hey, hey. was public. Were, were you private, private when you, you went you on holiday? You this here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, as we were saying. So, um, yeah, so we dress like this because yeah. of our man, Steve. Uh, mm -hmm. Suit City. Suit City. Uh, it's on. Is that, is that first floor or mezzanine floor? 
Yes, first, time. first, first yeah. floor on uh, Society Business Park. Uh, yeah, Society Business Park, first floor on Cairo, on Cairo Road, and yep. uh, the suits you're seeing here, like we emphasized in the intro, mm -hmm. second intro now. You can grab these suits for whatever event. This looks more like a corporate kind of thing. You can grab your suits for a wedding. Yeah, I feel like this He's one dressed can up blow very. You, bro. It'll, it'll do <laughs> it. like this one can give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> Just by looking, I'm even intimidated by the, <laughs> by the, by the mannequin. mannequin, right? <laughs> you want to call it like, boss, don't you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> boss. Hey, go. Uh, we're talking but, okay, about your, so, wait, your theology so quick, degree. Uh, yeah. Quick disclaimer. Mm -hmm. So. Because we're family here. Yeah, true. Everybody that watches us, it's almost like we know everybody that watches by name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. So for the first 20 minutes, this call is drop out here. Forgot to press record. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> so there's a high- I forgot to put the memory card yeah. in it, yeah. yeah. It, it, so it was not recording. It wasn't recording, yeah. And, and we have essentially torn- let me, let me just confirm what? it's recording now, yeah? No, it is. Okay. <laughs> so, so let me tell you this. Several times we've torn a new asshole in Martin's, Martin's back ass. Yeah. Because he's messed up. Uh, and now he messes up. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something, Abel. I'm going to turn away from you for a second. Mm. You know when you start something with somebody mm. <laughs> and you equally own it mm -hmm. and you can't fire them. Mm. <laughs> but then the F up. It must be very annoying, eh? But then the F up. Come on. You curse under your breath. <laughs> like this mother. <laughs> if you were anyone else. Gone. But you see, Elson, that's called marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be married. <laughs> there are times. Mm. Mm. Man. Mm. If you were not the mother to my kids, <laughs> if I did not make those vows, <laughs> catch wow. up to the kids like, why isn't mommy here? She got fired. <laughs> <laughs> she messed up. Nah, man. Hey, but we're, we're talking about your. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if uh, people were able to catch it in uh, <laughs> the first 20 minutes with low volume, but we're talking yeah. about your theology degree and we're explaining why you studied uh, theology. Which yeah. I don't understand. You still doesn't understand? <laughs> maybe, maybe we can pick it up from there. Yeah, so let me tell now. you what I don't understand. Yeah. People who do theology, people who do secretariat, and food and nutrition. I, I, I have got, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, just explain this to me. Ah, man, you know, the thing is with, with, with theology, you got to understand that it's a, it sometimes it's a calling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I never felt like I was the best person for the job. Even till now, I'm just like, why? <laughs> you know, because it's like, it's, um, so I'll tell you what happened. I was, I was in Livingston years ago, man. And these guys had invited me on a mission trip. So they Who's said, the, what guys? um, Kai Alpha from Yunza. Okay. So they said, let's go on this mission trip. You play guitar. Come, you know what I'm saying? We can, we're gonna do so. We, we, the whole thing was scheduled. We're gonna do like hospitals, different things. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Then one night, we, they're like, we're gonna go to the streets. I'm like, okay, cool. So we go to the marketplace. Then they're like, at the end of the night, they're like, yeah, now we're gonna go and talk to the prostitutes. I'm saying, that's where you're gonna miss me. I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. I don't want temptations. And I'm just, yeah, because I was just like, that's a whole different <coughs> world, right? Then, but then, um, <laughs> it's a funny thing. While I was in the market, while I was walking, I, I'm sorry if anybody came back looking for it, but I picked up a 10 kwacha on the floor, right? <laughs> and just like right there in the market, I'm just like, oh yeah. And I, and I decided, okay, I'm going to go and buy <clears throat> talk time with this. Yeah. So I go to this little open shop. I walk in and there's a girl who walks in right behind me. And I'd seen the girl per, like going up and down the street, right? So I'm not going to try to judge what she was doing but yeah <laughs> so i'm just like so she walks in behind me so i have a 10 kwacha i'm buying five kwacha talk time she comes behind me she asks for five kwacha talk time so i'm like you know what let me get it for you so we start walking out together i'm like hey what are you what are you doing here no i'm just here working i'm, I'm from out of town uh my cousin brought me here and i and the end so i said uh can i talk to you for a second she goes yeah so we go and sit down so i'm thinking what am I going to say? So we sit down under a bus station. This is on 22 hours. Mm. And we're sitting under a bus station. And, uh, and, I gr and I said, you know what? I said, I don't have the words to say, but can I put them in a song? So one of the things I'm, I'm good at is like, I know how to freestyle if I'm making music. Mm. Right? So I just grab the song and I just start singing about like God's love. And she starts like, like tearing up. Then I'm like, do you want to receive Christ in your heart? And she goes, yeah. So we end up praying. 
And so she walks away and the feeling, the emotion I felt at that moment was so overwhelming. I'm just like, oh man, I want to do this every single day. And that was the first time that for me, I heard God tell me, he's like, you will, right? Now I'm like, oh, I thought this is something that people do when they're in their 60s, right? Mm. Because I always felt like pastors or people in ministry are like old people. Now everyone can hear what you're saying. Everyone thinks you're wise already. Then you go and do Bible school. So I'm just like, and the opportunity <clears throat> opened up. So I went to um, Rayma Bible College in, in uh, Oklahoma. And it was a whole different place. Like I just, I just generally thought, I'd even put music aside. I thought like God just wanted me to be a serious guy, <laughs> serious in life, everything. Mm. And I, because I just felt like you got the wrong guy. But it changed um, when I began to realize what, what it really was about. It was just like, I realized like my personality was needed in that space, my, the things I knew, the things that I, like your perfect fit for what you're called for, right? Mm. And, and that's why even like my experience in life has always been that no matter how many times, even when I fall, I feel like it's always gonna be a lesson. Even if I, even with the things <clears throat> that I struggle with, I feel like it's gonna be a lesson. And it's helped me in life have better relational situations. So that's why even like when we've done, even with the music that I've done, it's yeah. all, there's always been that always controversy. It's like, but why is Abel doing this? But why is Abel doing that? Because for me, I came to understand what my calling was, right? Yeah. A long time ago, I'm just like, I'm not here to serve the church as a building in that sense. I'm here for the body. Right. And I feel like my message is for the people because I studied youth ministry. So my message is for the culture, the young, the people who can we can have conversations like this. We can laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm, most people would feel intimidated because when you usually graduate from Bible college, there's always that vibe of where you're going to is you're serving under the structure of the ministry, right? Right. So the ministry dictates how you should carry yourself, re usually. Mm -hmm. And some people say, no, the Bible's it. But then being in ministry for a long time, you come and realize that, man, some of the things people practice, they're not really like in line with the Bible. It's not, it's not in line with the characteristic of Jesus. So I would always bring up like Matthew chapter 9 when Jesus goes to Matthew's <coughs> place and he's sitting with tax collectors and sinners and they're eating with him and they enjoy his presence. And I ask people this, like, how many of you guys know dudes who are like straight up sinners who enjoy a pastor's presence? <laughs> like, right. Right? like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the, what, so what is it about Jesus that people who are prostitutes would leave whatever they're doing or guys who could have been out chilling? They're like, oh, I want to be where Jesus is at. Right. I'm just yeah. like. Where did we lose that, or are we getting it right? Like, what is it that we're missing? Damn, it's that that's lot, not really working. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's really just what for me has always been my passion and my heart, and that's why I feel like you know it's it wasn't a loss for me try to to try to study and, and learn the word. I just realized like I, I it took me not it took knowledge, and at the end of the day, it's also helped me not be um, manipulated as well because I think there's so many. Uh, people out there who've got like ministries or like no you know I see you coming as my worship lead I'm like nope <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like bro I know the word <laughs> like you can't you can't you can't trick me you know what I'm saying yeah. like I hear God for myself like you can't you can't do it. but then also you realize how many people are deceived because they have that thing of oh did you know they're trying so hard to please either the church or whatever yeah I think it, it explains a lot why Abu Chung is usually a topic of discussion because yeah. Half the time, like even people I told were coming to do this interview today, they're like, oh, that guy who yeah. sings with uh, secular artists, people have a, yeah. pro a lot of Christians have a problem with you singing with yeah. people like Chandana K. Yeah. They have a problem with you performing at most, well, events yeah. that are, you know, not gospel events or yeah. secular events. Yeah. Others are opposed to the way you dress, the way you dye your hair, the way you braid your hair. Yeah. Now that you've explained it the way you have yeah. from a youth ministry <laughs> point of view, yeah. I think I'm starting to understand the man that Abel Chung is now more than ever. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you, have, you have this, um, I mean, we, we would take a lot of shots. And sometimes over those, those shots hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they come from the community that you, you think you, you're all in it for the same thing. But for me, it's different because for a lot of people, they meet the sinner at church, right? When they mm -hmm. see someone going up, like you'll go, you'll go to a church and somebody will be like, the pastor will preach a sermon and someone will go up. For me, it's different. Like we started with street ministry. Like if I tell you my stories of 
uh, doing street ministry in, in North Tulsa where there's a lot of gangs, right? So you, you gangbangers are telling you, bro, people get shot here where you're standing. And, but you're still kind of having conversations. And people will have real conversations where they'll, they'll bit you back and like, well, well, what about this? What about this? And a lot of Christians have never been in that situation where mm. people are actually saying, well, convince me, right? Convince me about what you believe. And so we like, so they always assume that we should be in comfortable situations, right? Like we should create this Christian utopia where we have our own concerts, our own music, yeah. our own gyms, our own what, and people be like, yeah, that's our community. But I'm like, I don't think it was ever meant to be like that. It was meant to be a conquering mindset of, this love, this experience, you take it to people that you want to hear. You take it to places that need to hear. It. And, and I think there was a time, I mean, you can, you can say it now, but there was a time where I had a tr very traumatic experience where I realized even I had tried hard to fit into that community. And the repercussion was a very um, traumatic experience. And, and, and that's why I said, I don't think I'll ever try to be caught again in that situation of trying to be more pleasing to a group of people, uh, especially like the Christian community, when I know what my my calling is. So that that is that is where I can I can definitely cut stem from. How do you, if somebody says, <clears throat> convince me to believe what you believe in? Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you have like a go to either scripture or speech that you that you've prepared? Because <laughs> I'm sure that's happened so, yeah, to yeah. you, right? So I, I, I I'm was, sure too I many think, times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it always stems from having honest conversations. So like, you know, you, you find out where the person is at, you know, you say, okay, hey, do, has anybody ever told you God loves you and has got a great plan for your life? And then from Are you then, one of those people? Huh? Are you one of those people? Like what? Has anyone ever told me? No, like who approaches you and says, uh, has anybody ever yeah, told like you? Yeah, I've, like I've, I've led many people with God just from having that conversation. No, because when I say those people is, that's how Jehovah's Witness approach yeah. you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'd say, when, I when think, you're- I honestly say, like Jehovah's Witness- Oh man, they're like, you heard the good news and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> I know what you're about to say to me. Listen, listen to me. I, I've always said over and over again, yeah. if you're walking home and yeah. if you make the fundam fundamental mistake <laughs> of making eye contact, <laughs> With the Jehovah's Witness, you are going home with 67 pamphlets. <laughs> but you see, but you see, the you thing is, the good news, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. But you see, the thing is, I don't want, I want, I don't want you to walk away with the pamphlet. I want you to walk away with a personal relationship with God, right? Because you, you, you ask people like, dude, we would go to streets like North Mid, like past midnight, right? Then when it's really popping off, and man, it would be so crazy. You start, you start conversations like, hey. Um, has anybody ever told you God loves you? And you find a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This is also one, one of the reasons. A lot of people have been to church. And then their stories are usually, yeah, I've been to church, but, hey, sh you guys, like, I don't, I didn't fit in. Like, I wasn't accepted. Then you realize how much acceptance means to people, right? Mm. And how much we, uh, many churches reject people. Um, not sometimes they don't even see it intentionally, but just in the way they're like, oh, this person is not really, right? One of us. And so then you start having a conversation like that. Then you start stripping away the things like, okay, you, know, you realize that your clothes are not the main factor, you know, realize this. Then you get down to the issues of the heart. And then, they, then you tell your testimony, right? Of your personal experiences. Like, why is it that you believe? Like, why, Abel, why is it that, you know, you could have had, any opportunity to just, you know what I'm saying? People's even up to now, do you still do gospel music? I'm like, man, I, everything for me is gospel. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's good news, even for my love songs, for everything, because what I'm always trying to bring is that message of, of hope, of love, of connection, even when I talk about brokenness, because these are real stories. Like I, It's like a soldier coming back to tell you what it was really like on the front lines. And people are like, no, 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 no. And then they're trying to do politics. And that's what the thing is that I can't handle the politics because I've met the people on the street. I've seen the pain. I've, I've taken people to the hospital because of... You know, they've gotten into fights. We've stopped women from being raped. Like this is, this stuff happens at night on the street. Mm. Like, and you, 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 you begin to see like, sometimes like you come out of, like those one time we were, 
man, so attacked on social media because uh, Mag 44 was opening for Ice Prince, right? Mm. And it was so heavy, like, oh, you guys are what, 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 what. And, but it was so crazy because that night when he jumped on stage, people ran to the stage. Yeah. So I said, so I used, to be, I used to be a keyboard warrior, like heavy. So I'll be like, hey, you know what? Why don't you guys come out and evangelize with us since you're all about, you know, preaching. And we'll go on the street and no one would show up except me and Mag. <laughs> and then, mm. and so then we're out there on the street and we're, we start praying for one person. I remember one incident, we start praying for one person. We got our eyes closed and man, a line is forming up. Wow. Now, Owens are coming out of the club and they're seeing people praying for people and they're like, no, can you pray for me as well? Can you pray for me as well? And what I've come to realize, like even for me, if you, if you hang out with me, I'll find you, you know, I'll, I'll show up at a bar to go and hang out. Like I don't drink, but I'll show up at a bar to go and hang out with my friends if they want, if they're watching football, if we're doing mm. something like cool. And so sometimes people, so many times people come up like, oh, Abel, I, man, I love your music. I've actually got your music in my car. So, I realize sometimes like w there's certain things that we've used to alienate people from getting an opportunity to have a relationship with God because we're so <clears throat> trying to prove this outward attitude, right? And I just, I've always just believed that the word itself is powerful, right? If someone is introduced to the word, it, do it doesn't have, it, it has the power in itself so that if someone encounters it, they'll be like, you know what? Oh, that's that's some food for thought. Maybe it might happen five years down. Maybe it happened. Yeah. Maybe it might happen the right then and there. Planted, yeah. But the seed gets planted, and they say the average person hears the gospel about five times before they actually accept Christ. So it's not even just about like you're telling it because like you know right then. And the problem is, I think people want to microwave, you know, believers, right? Like they get you in your church, and immediately they they hoping that one year you're gonna stop so you're smoking, you're gonna start to drink it, like all of those things, right? Yes, I do understand, but for many people, sometimes it's a process. Sometimes it's things they grow up with, right? And and I had to learn this lesson one time. I'll tell you this crazy story. <laughs> I am I even saying this on that Z podcast? So, but I'll tell you the story because it's the podcast. So once, yeah, yeah. So so one time I'm trying to be zealous, right? So I'm trying to be like heavy zealous. I'm I'm in Bible college, right? So you know you you're in that mode of oh man, I'm charged up. So what do you do? You go online, um, found this girl who was a, who had been a porn star, who was a porn star. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Real story. Real story. So I'm like, I am going to write. Because you know what? The thing is, again, I had struggled with it, right? So with I'm what? just like, with porn. Okay. True story. So <clears throat> now I'm just like, I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to this girl about Jesus. And you know the approach I use? I'm like, yo. You know the thing that you're doing in your life is got is is terrible and whatnot. You're destroyed. I like I came like with hell and brimstone and fire. You're going to hell. And <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> she responds. She responds with this. She goes, "Do you know that I was raped, me and my sister, from the time we were six Jesus. by nearly every man in our family, Jesus. from my uncles, for cousins, whatnot? Shit, they, 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 they. Who are you to tell me this? Do you know what?" Then I'm like. Dang. Now, for me, who grew up in a Christian home where my parents were prayer for what, that was like, yo. So I went to one of my friends. Uh, his name is Kedus. And I'm like, yo, Kedus, yo, man, I know you're on that. Because he was, he was heavy on this uh, grace teaching, right, yeah. by Joseph Prince. And I'm like, yo, Kedus, man, I need your help. And he goes, uh, well, okay, what do you need help with? And I said, yo. My G, I told him the whole story. Yeah. And then he's like, man, he's like, why would you go and say that? I'm like, well, I wanted to. He's like, bro, he says, stop trying to tell her your narrative. I said, he goes, just tell her about Jesus. I'm like, what? You know, just tell, he says, go and tell her about Jesus. He says, not, don't try to sell what you think she needs to do to change. Yeah. Just tell her about Jesus, the goodness of God. And so I went back, wrote to her. And, and she literally, her response from that was, wow. She goes, there's only one person in my whole life who I genuinely feel loves me for who I am. And she knows what I do, but she always prays for me. She opens the door. That's my mom. You are probably the second person in my life now who sounds like my mom. And that's how we developed a friendship. Like, we'd always yeah. write to each other and talk to each other, right? <clears throat> and... And that, for me, changed my perspective. I'm like, 
man, why was I? And there's people who will look at a, you know, a chandanake and whatnot and say, why don't you change them? Because what they want to see, they want to see the change, right? Yeah. But they don't understand, like, why don't you just tell them about Jesus? That's for me is always just you know, tell them and let them change. Let that happen. On, on the way here, like, yes. like I said, I, I mentioned to a few people that's coming to uh, do this with you today. Yes. And somebody actually said, they were listening to the Chandanake album mm -hmm. and they came to a song entitled Lewa, mm -hmm. which they found highly immoral. Yeah. And they listened to half of this song, sort of liked it, then pressed next. And there you were on this yeah. album. They're like, but how can a gospel artist, artist of this yeah. magnitude yeah. feature on the same album with such high immorality? What kind mm -hmm. of justification does he have for doing such? Yeah. So the thing about it is, for me, that song or any of the music that I've made for Chandra, and I'll be very honest in the way yeah. I approach it, was not made for the church listeners, right? Right. It's not made for people who... Every, you, can, you cannot pretend, people who, who have heard it, which means you went listening to it. <laughs> so it's people who listen yeah. to the music. Even when I'm, the first time that I did like a secular uh, collaboration was Isenge with Chef. Yeah. And what I wanted to highlight was a relationship with God. Like you can have a relationship with God. So what do I do? I, if I got mag to rap on it, everybody's like, it would just be like another gospel song. Yeah, everybody can have a relationship. I'm like, so the song, so I was like, anybody? Anybody. Okay, cool. Anybody. Here's anybody. And the moment I introduced Chef on that track, that was the first time, like, even, like, non-Christian streaming sites were calling me for the song. Hmm. That was then, that was the first time I realized there is, that was the most streamed song at the time. Because people were like, yeah, we know Chef, but they were hearing about you can have a relationship with God from Chef. And mm. Chef was saying it because when I had a conversation with him, he told me about the time he got saved when he was 16. But guess what? There were so many teachings. There were so many things trying to microwave him. We had the same thing with Pompey. When Pompey got saved, it was a lot of, no, he's a satanist. No, he's a what? You know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, Pompey. N trust me. It was crazy. Even he can tell you his story because it was so many... No, uh, we just want to meet with you. They meet with him. Um, and we just wanted to just see if you're really saved. Our pastor sent us. How? You know what I'm saying? There was, there was so much that even he felt at some point like, why am I even in this if I'm not accepted? So And, and so one time we even started a Bible study just so we can invite guys who were in the secular scene because all of them had the same story. Even when they felt like, oh man, let me go to a church today that church made them a highlight or people were staring at them or people were like, you know, trying to double check whether they were real, right? Like, is, are you legit? So it's like people, they don't even get an opportunity to have a normal growth like everybody else. It's, it's always attached to their fame or there's something else that attached. Um, I can't control what uh, Chanda and I can make in terms of their music, in terms of, right. uh, but I know that that song, Take All of Me, plays in clubs, plays in what? And the words are the gospel. True. And there's somebody out there who's singing that, but is going to wake up the next morning and think, you know what? <laughs> maybe I need to Maybe I need to go to God. Because everyone hits that point in their yeah, life. True, where they're just like, hmm, is this, this is not making sense. But where do they hear it? But then if you create this environment where they can shut that message out, like I cannot... I, I can go to places where I don't even have to hear any of that. But somehow it's found its way in places that people would never even expect. Because I was even surprised that Overcomers was playing. Because that's a bit more slower. Song. Yeah. So I thought, then somebody said, I heard that new Chandana K song. I was like, ah, where? I was like no, he's playing at Grand Dad. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, oh. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. Yeah. The first time Take All of Me hit, I was spooked. Because I, I have a lot of DJ friends, right? And some guys were calling me, like sending me videos from the clubs, from what all the way in Livingstone, Choma, White, 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 Chiri, the Chinimbo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, no, nah, yeah. man, play. But, but that's the thing. You, you, but you, the problem, I guess, that we had, and I'll t I generally tell you with, um, with I guess it was, um, it was the introduction, right, that we are given, especially when you make a modern sound for young people as yeah. a Christian artist. The problem comes with the introduction. The introduction is always that you are an alternative to what's happening out there. So it's like, 
oh, you don't have to listen to these Jay-Z's and what, what, what. That's the way youth, we were introduced at youth conferences. These Jay-Z's and whatever's, we have these guys here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's already, what is that? Oh, you've already told us that we are made just for your youth groups. We're made for your churches. We're made for your community. And if we ever step out, any time that we did Oktoberfest or Day of Thunder, what? The backlash would be, you are taking those youth from the church into the world. Mm. And I'm like, no, but we never said that our, when we t want to reach out, we want to reach out to those who don't come to your church, those who yeah. you have no control over, right? Those are the ones we want to share the message to. But then you've made it in such a way that we are an alternative. We, that's why I just like, we just want to make music. We make music with the message, with the what, even with love songs. I tell people like, let it be that. Just say, Michelle, are these reasons we're hearing of an excommunication at church? There's rumors of you being excommunicated from church. No, I was never excommunicated. I was fired. <laughs> Huge difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my contract. Yeah, my contract was not renewed. Um, oh, word, word, word yeah, of the street is not. He's been excommunicated nah, from church. No, nah, no, I, I still go to the same church. I've been going to the same church since I was about 13 years old, 12. What church is this? Uh, Miracle Life. I've never, it's, it was, it was, my contract was not renewed. Why? It was up for renewal. Well, because I was not, I couldn't keep up administratively. Right. Yeah. I couldn't, uh, my church is a great church. Like it functions extremely, very high uh, in terms of administrative. They, mm. um, I mean, you would have to create like a, like if anything that you're doing the following year, you have to create a strategic plan the year before. So all your expenses, everything, what not, what. You cannot ask beyond your budget if it's like, it's like work, it's, no disrespect, it's almost, it was like working for a company, like a very high-end company. And that's why that even like, taxes. it helped me as well. It, <laughs> it helped me as well, like even in my career after, because I'm like, oh, it helped in how I manage and different things because I'm like now, even I put the push the same excellency thing in terms of my music. Right. But I just generally feel and have and I would have these talks with my pastor on off. I'm just like, you know, I just don't feel comfortable in the office. I feel like I should be out there. And he'd be like, right. no. But if you want to go out there, you gotta do the work. And the problem like, there was always work in the office, there's always work in the office. And I just I just never felt I started feeling like I wasn't made for that. Um, but at the same time, you know, you went to Bible school uh, and this church helped pay and there was and great respect, great pastors. And so by the time and and it was and I remember my wife was she was also she was also unemployed. Right. Yeah. So this is a crazy thing. So they call me in and my contract is up for renewal. So I'm just like we're getting closer to the date when like it's supposed to expire and they're just like. So I'm like, okay, you know, we're only about a few days away, but it's time to expire, maybe. And remember, I'm leading youth, youth, youth group, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm getting ready for youth that week. So, and then we have a meeting like on a Thursday and like, okay, sorry, we've taken a long time to deliberate over this. And they said, we're not going to renew your contract. <laughs> and you have to tell the youth this coming Saturday. Man, I was just like, and I remember that morning, I just prayed to God, like, for that grace. Like, okay, whatever you're going to do, just whatever it is, it's going to be grace. Mm. And it was, so I end up not having my contract renewed, and I'm unemployed. But they were like, okay, listen, we understand that we're not going to renew your contract, but we're going to give you something to be able to do in the, in like, for three months so that at least you have some money. So we're going to give you a a, a job in terms of maintenance. Right. Job right? maintenance. Yeah. Like actual physical maintenance? Yeah, physical maintenance. Like slashing the grass. It will like picking up boxes, packing up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know what? Now. You're a better person than I am. <laughs> I would have gone back and I'm like, nah, God nah, said nah. nah. God that said God, nah. God told me. God told me I'm supposed to remain <laughs> with the youth. <laughs> you, you're gonna argue with God? Is that what you're about to do right now? Man, I was, I was just, I, you know, that's the thing. Like, you know, when, when you, but, but, but like, again, I say like great, great people, solid people, they, they have their vision, they yeah. had their vision. And that was like, 
And I knew even in my heart at that point, I'm like, man, I just cannot operate at this level in what they're, they're able to do. And there's, de- there's better people that came after me. So at that point, it was, it was like a low because now you're showing up from looking like you're on the pastoral staff to coming to pick up boxes. And now like the head of maintenance guy, even they're like, yo, what oh. is going on? So I'm just like, yo... I'm here to work. <laughs> and I did it for about three months. Diligently. And, and uh, I remember, so remember, it's a very minimal pay. So it was, my pay was like lower than my rent. <laughs> so, so how we survived for those three yeah. months was crazy. But it was just the grace of God. Like God really pulled me through. And it was, and I wasn't allowed to sing as well at the same time. Like they were just like, you know, we, we, so I said, okay, cool, I won't sing. After those three months, Mm. Uh, the first song that I sang was a song. So during those three months, waking up every day, maintenance. I remember the first time I woke up, it was about, it was my, it was during those three months, I remember it was my dad's birthday, my late dad's birthday. That was the time I wrote Father's Child. Right. And that's one of the most powerful songs I've ever written. Also, that's when I wrote a song called Warrior. This is one of the, like, the best songs I've ever written. The first time I remember singing in church, Man, I broke down and cried because I was like, I felt like that period of time, God really, really carried me through. And that was when um, uh, Reverend, uh, the late Reverend Pukuta Manza took me in uh, to work with him at Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia. So I worked on uh, helping election training monitors for, for the 2011 elections. Yeah. yeah, then after that, that's when I really felt like, okay, you know what? The music was starting to make a lot like sense mm. and so that's when I just decided okay I'm gonna go into full time ministry I did come back with the church in terms of of just as a traveling minister during that period of time but right. then after that we've just we've just basically just maintained a good friendship I still show up to church every but I cannot commit because they usually usually the church is very strict in terms of like attendance or not attendance like oh every Sunday no yeah. but if you're serving in any capacity in the church whether you want to volunteer as an usher and different things they always try to push for that thing of people getting more involved in the church the only thing for me is that because of my traveling because of my what I mean my kids still go there and what I'm not I'm not a bitter person about it I've never been bitter about it people just create a narrative an assumption that you are, are you, are you still at the church? Did you move? Did you what? I'm just like, nah, I don't think God's Because as far ever, as yeah. the soccer is concerned, yeah. you were excommunicated nah, from the nah, church. No, 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 no. I was there on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I go there. Every time I'm around, I show up. You know, wow. I just sit, I just sit in the back or I got a baby now. And youngest one is like, still one sub. So I'll sit in the baby room. I'm just a church attendee. But, you know, at the same time, what I do is still helpful to the body you know what i'm saying like more people listen to my music whether i'm i can go to a catholic church there there are things pastors can't do pentecostal pastors usually can't preach in a catholic church or can't go to a jehovah's witness church i can go to any one of those i you know i've invited an sda or i'm invited to jehovah's witness i'm invited to catholic church i'm invited to and so it's it's opened up a whole different world altogether. Mm. And I play in clubs and bars. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and I think when, when like, you work yeah. for a church, mm-hmm. does the church pay tax on mm-hmm. the salaries they pay? Yes, they do. Yeah. So for for people who work in church staff, there is still is uh, so who pays, pays the tax? Okay, church. cool. Yeah. All right, cool. So it's deducted. All of that is paid for deducted right. from the salaries. Is right. that the only tax they pay? Um, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> they do have an accountant. Is, they do have an accountant. Yeah. But I think, I think the church, yeah. I know for that's, a fact that that church well. really, dra- really operates well with, within the laws of Zambia and different things. Whatever laws are there for churches in terms of tax and what nation, I'm sure they abide by them. So, yeah. Dude. They're very diligent in terms of how they, even how they take it money, even how they, 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 they there was all, like even the AGM. Like if you go to Miracle Life AGM, if you remember, it's crazy. Like they are, they are down to the T. Like them, like we spent this money, like this, 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 this. There was a, this and this and this. Like you have to write a report about everything. Church is good business, bro. Yeah. Like you have to write a report about <laughs> everything, man. Church is yeah. good business. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, like so many churches are under pressure. Like they don't wanna, they don't wanna mess up. You know what I'm saying? Like what people, do you mean mess up? Yeah, like like, get like in t- you know, <laughs> that's if you have that. Pr- <laughs> but there's there's good churches in the terms like they understand that people are. People who pay tithe 
have are basically saying, you know, they want to see some sense of responsibility. And those churches are very diligent at doing that. Like they're mm-hmm. very good at that. So I, I appreciate the fact that their their structure is very administrative, like a high level administrative. Some people have a problem with that, but like, oh no. That's why I say like I just couldn't function in that capacity. I have a different gift. I'm more like, let's go out. You know, so I feel like it is in that sense that there are people who that's why you find a lot of corporate people go to that church because they understand the language. They understand, you know, Mm. the Excel sheets and everything, the breakdowns, like even the board is made up of like people who are very, you know, big business people or certain people like where who can manage to hold it accountable because you need that, you know? And that's why a lot of people, I think, are very comfortable when they give their tithe to that church because they don't let, oh, if they say, oh, this is where we're at with the building fund, we'll have this building up in the next two months, blah, blah, blah. They're, they will have it up, like, within that space. Like, they have to know, man. I have to, I have to give them juice. If they say, oh, our construction guys increase the price or different things, like, that, like, you will know all of that stuff. Like, down There's to a the whole team. level yeah. of transparency. Yeah, extremely. I, I, I need to ask this, eh? Yeah. And this is, I'm, I'm also Pentecostal, but I'm a bit conflicted over one thing, and mm-hmm. you being a theologian, mm-hmm. that's what you call them, right? Theologians. I, no, I have no idea. Uh, I call them Abel. <laughs> My guy, come on. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, yeah, that's hey, but yeah. I, I need to ask this for uh-huh. somebody who, yeah. you know, has been a Christian for so long and mm-hmm. you've studied theology as well. I'm a bit conflicted over. Let me start it from Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, right? Yeah. So yeah. they had like little tongues of fire above them on that day of Pentecost when they were filled mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And they started speaking in tongues, different languages, right? Yeah. And the people outside, according to my understanding of Acts chapter 2, mm-hmm. there were Egyptians outside there, there were Indians, there were people, there were Jews, there were, uh, I, I can't, there were many races, there were many, people from many mm-hmm. countries outside yeah. the building where the praying was happening from. Yeah. And when this particular moment comes where they're filled by the Holy Spirit, yeah. these guys start speaking in different languages. Mm-hmm. And I understand they spoke in languages that other people outside could understand. Uh-huh. The Bible actually states that the Egyptian guy could hear a guy who's from Jerusalem speaking his language. And he yep. got confused, like, yeah. I spoke to that guy earlier and we needed a translator, but now he's in there. He's speaking yeah. my language. Mm-hmm. So these guys are full of the Holy Spirit and they start speaking languages that the traders outside could understand. Mm-hmm. So maybe I've understood the Bible wrongly, but how mm-hmm. have we then switched up the whole speaking in tongues thing or have I yeah. misunderstood it because yeah. what I hear in church now and I'm a little confused yeah. is people speaking that yeah. nobody else understands yeah. when yeah. the Bible stated that these people guys spoke in languages that the guys outside understood yeah. where have we where have I got it wrong am I misunderstanding yeah. something here no I, I get it so yeah. in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 like the, they say that you know the Bible interprets the Bible usually eh? so yeah. in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 there's a line that Paul uses where he says though I speak with tongues of men Mm-hmm. And of a- or end of angel, but I have not love. It's like a clanging symbol. Then in in uh, I think First Corinthians in 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 uh, Second Corinthians, he talks now about tongues. Right, he talks about he says um, like don't just speak in tongues. Right, like have an interpreter. Now remember, then now it's like it's almost like he's talking about a different tongues. Right, right. He says have an interpreter because. You know, if you're speaking in tongues, you are speaking to God. And the person next to you can't understand you. Mm -hmm. Which means there is now a tongue that people talk, which was now common within that church, which is now common in today's church, where people speak in tongues, but the person next to you can't understand you. But Paul was saying, like, if you're praying, like, directly to God, and it's you communicating with God, and you're praying in tongues, it is, it is from your spirit communicating directly to God. But if you're speaking to the church, don't go and start praying in tongues to the whole church because unless you have someone who's interpreting, because now there's people who will not understand what you're saying. So that first day of Pentecost, there was that understanding that, that it had reached those people, right? Like mm-hmm. it, was re- it was being interpreted in their ears. And there, I've heard different testimony about people who will be like, oh my gosh, like no, they the hear Egyptian, that kind the of The Egyptian tongue. guy stood up exactly. and said, that guy is speaking my language yeah. now. Yeah, it's but speak- when, yeah. when Paul was talking to the local church, he was saying like, hey guys, when you're praying in tongues, it's better you just pray <laughs> in, in your life. If you're praying to the congregation, right. amongst the congregation, 
then it's better you pray because unless you, if you're praying up there where people are like, no, you know, there are people like, oh, they're leading prayer and they're there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There are times where just like, yo, my G, can you have an interpreter? That's what Paul was saying. Like, because <laughs> yeah. somebody's sitting there and they don't understand what you're saying, but you're praying to, for, for the public. So that's where it, I guess even a lot of people um, debate over tongues and some people just like they just don't even want to get into the tongue talk because they're like you guys are fake because there's no interpreter there right those mm. are debates that usually happen between um, most most find when you find denominations denominations that's where they divide themselves over those things right like ah you guys are not known like Pentecostal this one that's why I like they say Pentecostals because Pentecostals are more very em- they emphasize m- strongly on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, yeah, right? Yeah. And then there are other denominations which are like, nah, you guys don't read the word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you don't read the Bible much more. But that's what basically, there is tongues that can be spoken that only you and the Spirit of God can understand. And I generally think that's what Paul meant by the tongues of angels. So, um, but of men, like the ones that people can understand. Right, where to you can actually hear somebody praying like that happened on the day of Pentecost. So that's 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 how I've come to understand it when I read when I read the Bible. Are you answered? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that is that does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, but maybe I've understood things differently because yeah. I, I look at Acts chapter two and the <laughs> Egyptian guy says, a guy who walked in there was not speaking my language. Now he yeah. speaks what I speak back home. Yes. The Indian guy came and said the same. This guy's now speaking Indian. Uh-huh. Because, that wasn't wasn't him, true. because that wasn't him speaking. Yeah, but my point is they spoke languages that people from other countries now it was spoke. The, yeah, because mm-hmm. it wasn't him speaking. There you was, have to understand he might think. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Um, if I had to what he's okay. Anyway. It was an experiment that was done mm-hmm. uh, that I saw, I think, on the Discovery Channel. Um, I'll look for this link. And I know you guys always question the stuff that I say, but I, I promise to no, God. Try, try us once more. more. <laughs> try us once more. You say what? Try us All right, cool. once more. Yeah. yeah. So they did an experiment where uh, a woman got pregnant, and when she was a couple of months old, uh, where the fetus was being formed, they put this woman in a soundproof room mm-hmm. until she gave birth and they left the baby in the soundproof room. So the baby grew up normal, uh, being fed, playing, but they made it a point that whenever anybody was around the baby, they don't talk. So the baby is not um, subjected to any sound, any language, nothing. And I do not know the age, but I think the baby must have been four years old. The baby spoke a word. Now, mind you, the baby has not been exposed to any, any sound, no language, yeah. And the word that the baby said was the word father, but in Hebrew. Dang. And the parents were British. <laughs> Dang. Huh. Dang. I'll look for that. I'll send that to you. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? So, so more to what you're saying, yeah. this guy could have been like me. I don't know a word of... Hebrew. Hebrew. But if I'm speaking in tongues, and now suddenly when the spirit is in me, I'm speaking a word that people that understand Hebrew will be like, wait, hold on. But then this guy only speaks English. Mm -hmm. Why is he now saying something that I can hear? So you're not adding more to my point, because my point is when those guys spoke in tongues, when they were caught by the the, the spirit, Mm -hmm. they started speaking languages that others outside, like... I speak Bemba in English. Mm-hmm. Right. And all of a sudden, I start speaking Hebrew. So if a guy from Israel was walking past you, he'd be like, oh, you'd be like, speaking my language. Kalenga is so speaking, my, my yes. point is, I'm in church and I hear somebody say, Raka, kaka, shika, kaka. Yes. Mm-hmm. To yes, Abel but, and but I, what, we don't know what that is. It's yeah, gibberish. Exactly. Yeah. And but, it's, if in, but if somebody from a, a country that, if that's a language, that's my like, point. Is it a yeah. language? Yes. And they're, yeah. and they're like, oh, Kalenga is saying there's no parking here. Yeah. But I understood what he's <laughs> but, just saying. <laughs> but also, saying, don't park here. But also, but also what, yeah. one of the things, remember, like, that's why I started with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, though I speak with tongues of men, men. and of angels, yeah. which means there is an angelic tongue, and which is not earthly. That nobody understands. Yeah, which yeah. is exactly. not earthly. All right, quick, we put it that so way. And then the other that one way. is the one yeah. that that dude was speaking yeah, in. Yeah, which is of men, like... <laughs> Yeah, like a tongue of men where you can yeah. understand the languages of men, right? Oh, yeah, true, like if you put it that of, way. The, of the world. Dude, yeah. what if does it mean? Mm-hmm. Because this was said to me. I've never told you this story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you another day. 
What does it mean? Because you, you kept bringing that up. Has yeah. someone said this to me? What does it mean to have a relationship with God? What does that mean? Oh, man. Okay. So here's, here's where we start. You just, so, just opened a whole can that he wanted to open. <laughs> Be, because yeah, before you answer yeah, that, yeah. I you were waiting for that opportunity to yeah. <laughs> Well, <listen> brother. To, <laughs> you remember when we were going to Livingston? Yeah. 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 I made you listen to Strive Masiwa's biography. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Amazing yeah. Amazing yeah, yeah, freaking yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So this guy wasn't a Christian when he, you know Strive Masiwa? Yes. He wasn't a Christian when he started, and this guy started like a couple of businesses that kept failing. The, the owner of Liquid, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Liquid is like the smallest, one of the smallest companies that he owns. Eh, for real? Bruh. Yeah. Dang. You go to Botswana. Ma- Ma- Mascom is big. Mascom in Botswana. Wow. Econet in Zimbabwe. Uh, Kwesa TV. Anyway, so, so, so he says, uh, around the time that he was, um, sorry to digress. I'm just uh-huh. going to uh, take you on a small journey. Yeah. Around the time that he was applying for um, the telecoms license mm-hmm. in Zim uh, to open up Econet. Mm-hmm. This was a five-year battle. Yeah. And he kept getting denied and denied. Mm-hmm. So after the 10th time of him being denied, so the wife was Christian. So he would go and drop off his wife at church. And for the three hours that she's in church, he would go and play tennis. Mm. So that Friday, his application was denied again. He goes, he drops his wife off. And as he's going to drive, as he's going to play tennis, he stops at the gate and he realizes, I'm way too depressed to play tennis today. Mm. So I'm, I'm not going to enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Let me just turn around and sit in the parking lot and wait for her to finish church. Right? So he goes, he sits for about 10 minutes and he quickly realizes, you know what, I'm listening to the radio, there's nothing mm-hmm. interesting. Let me just yeah. go in. But because I'm dressed in like a tennis attire, I can like go in. So I'm going to sit like right at the back. <laughs> yeah. Like right next to the door. Like yeah. this is the door, that's me. Yeah. So he goes in and he sits. Mm-hmm. And literally five to 10 minutes after he gets in, the pastor is talking about something totally different, but then stops dead in his tracks and then says, I've just had, I don't know what you call it. It's not an epiphany. Epiphany. Mm. Yeah. The, the, someone the in this Lord church. spoke to him. Yeah. The there's someone it. in this church. Come on. Yeah. And as I'm speaking, I keep seeing this person building towers, like cell phone towers, and yeah. he's wearing a hard hat and he's giving people instructions. If that person is here now and if they're listening, there's something you're doing wrong. But Mm. God doesn't want to talk to you through me. He wants to talk to you directly. He wants Mm. to have a relationship with you. But he doesn't have a relationship with you. Oh, So he needs you to have a relationship with him so he talks to you. And this guy knew immediately that that is him. And so he did not know what it meant to have a relationship with him. I can have a relationship with you. Yeah. I can have a relationship with you. Yeah. But I was like, I can't see God. So how do I have a relationship with him? Mm-hmm. So what he did is he got a Bible and he read it like a novel <laughs> from, <laughs> from Genesis, Genesis to, to Revelations. Revelations. Uh, wow. Yeah, uh, for the rest of that story, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it in a different podcast. But because he did not know what it means to have a relationship with him. Yeah. And you say what? He still does that every day. Oh, you know the dude. Oh, he still reads yeah. the Bible cover to cover every year. Yeah, true. Yeah. And yeah, so, so right after that, he began having dreams. Wow. And um, I don't, I don't want to digress too much, but every single one of the deals that he has done, he's prayed about it first. Mm-hmm. Um, Kalenga will tell you, like, part of it is when he was... MTN deal in uh, Zimbabwe? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The when one. he was going to, I think, Australia or Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. They were going to bid for a license. Yeah. On his way there, there was a company that had said, we're going to give me a hundred million dollars. Yeah. On the way there, they called him and they said, one of our shareholders is a shareholder in MTN. So we cannot back you because there's a conflict because MTN is also bidding in the same mm-hmm. auction. So they withdrew their mm-hmm. offer mm-hmm. and they're on the plane. Right, and so they go anyway. They get there. They get to the hotel. He gets the bid papers in the hotel room. He lays them on, on the floor. He puts his hand on them and he begins to pray. Wow. Now his partners are Jewish. They don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. Jesus, right? Jesus. So, they know that um, the financiers have drawn their offer. Yeah. And, <laughs> Strive keeps saying. 
God will show up. And these guys were like, well, he better show up quickly <laughs> because this bid is tomorrow. Yeah. So he goes and he prays. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, as he's praying, this is interesting, he sees numbers uh-huh. on a board uh-huh. and he gets up, there are five numbers and mm-hmm. he writes down those numbers but, and he quickly realizes what those numbers are. Right? He mm-hmm. writes them down. And so they go and they start bidding. They are in different rooms. So he says to his team at 60 million the first bid is going to drop out. Um the bidding went on and at 60 million um the announcer came to their room and they say the first bid has dropped out. Then they look at him like how do you they, know? But they, they don't they don't ask him, right? Yo. Then right after that then he says at 69 million the next bid is going to drop out. Like clockwork, uh-huh. at 69 million, the announcer came in and says, the next bidder has dropped out. Hey. Now they ask him, they're like, how do you know? And he was like, last night in my hotel room, I, play, I, I prayed. Uh-huh. And, and God showed me. God showed me. Yeah. The winning bid, n- bid the number. The winning bid number. Yeah. And the winning bid yeah. is going to be just shy of $100 million. So if we stay and we, we don't drop out, yeah. Just under a hundred million dollars, we're gonna get it at eighty or whatever it is, and they kept dropping off right up until they got to just under a hundred million, and they got the license. Wow! But our, our own boy again, they didn't have the money. <laughs> um, I'll try and share the link so you see how they then got the money. But then again, it then it then brought the question that yeah. there are so many people, including me, that have been told you need to have a relationship with God, but I don't know what that means. Yeah. Okay, so... This is Abel right now. (laughs) So, you know, a relationship with God starts with the first thing. Like, you have to to understand that um, if you read the... If you you start from our innermost part, right? I love the analogy that you gave about the kid who the first thing he recognized was, was father, right? When Jesus came into the world, the first thing when they asked him, like, how do we talk to God? How do we pray to God? The first things he says is our father. And I tell people like people who try to look at God from the perspective of all he wants you to do is serve. I'm like, that's a that's a no, no, because I'm a father of three boys. I didn't bring those guys into the world because I wanted them to serve me. I brought those guys to be loved on. And that's the initial beauty about what I feel God wants with every single human being is that he creates children to be loved on. The first thing that you see with God and Adam is that they have a relationship. It says God would come and meet Adam in the cool of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Because God wants a relationship. The next person that you hear God talk, that is spoken about in the Bible, like David, right? David, this is a guy that killed Goliath, but at the same time down the line, gets a guy killed because he slept with his wife and different things. Things that were like, if we knew, if that was on, let's say, modern day, we would just say, ah, <laughs> right off. Lost. Like, did that you mean the guy that... Right, right what, off. Yeah, but then yeah. what was it about that God, even though God had to punish him, but I maintained with him and called him a man after his heart because there's nothing more that David wanted from God than a relationship. He was a friend to God. And Jesus Christ, like, basically, and they said, like, David would write hymns because he would envy the day he could be in our position. When, because when Jesus Christ did was he replaced that sin that Adam, because Adam became a broken relationship between God and man. Mm. And you could no longer have a relationship with God because there was sin. So God is like, okay, so what are we going to do about the sin problem? Because this, this sin needs to go somewhere. So he puts it on Jesus who comes and takes it all. And he had to be an innocent sacrificial lamb because even in Jewish culture, you had to sacrifice. When, when there was time for reckoning came, People would go into like mourning, then they would bring a lamb, which was without blemish, no spot, and then they would keep it like a pet. This is the part that people miss. They'll keep it like a pet. Like imagine atta- getting attached, the way you get attached to a dog. Mm. And then when the time for sacrifice came, it was like, yeah, we're gonna now keep gonna kill. So that you can feel the pain of your sins. So Jesus, when he first shows up to John, John looks at him and says, behold the lamb of God. That's why he was introduced like that. Because now right, right. he was coming to replace us for our sins he god knew like there's no way these guys can have a relationship with me if it's by their own way 
Like we know that, all of us, every single one of us, we've got things that we deal with, dealt with, whatnot, right? And then, so Jesus now comes in and takes that place and he makes that relationship free. Now, with anything, any relationship, it's, it's on the table. If someone says, hey, how are you doing? I want to hang out with you. You can say no or you can say yes. That's why in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord, only then will you see the kingdom of heaven, right? You would see, you get to know the heart of God. You begin to understand who he is. You begin to understand what he wants and who he is, right? And that's why I think generally, I feel generally with a lot of people, we, are, we have seen religion rather than relationship. Because religion is like, oh no, if you, if you say this number of prayers and you do this and you said it, if you attend church like this and this and this, ah, then things are good. But then people are like, but... Then, but then all of a sudden, like, that guy is the one who listens to God, and then we all just show up. And whatever that guy says, but it's like, that's not a relationship. Then you're not having a relationship with God. You have to have that personally. You have to have, when you invite Jesus in your heart, then you begin to walk that journey. And even that's why I tell people, like, look at the greatest example is looking at the thief next to Jesus on the cross, right? Mm. His boy is like, my guy, that's why we're here because we are we did some wrong stuff that is worthy of death. Now imagine, I don't know what those guys did, right? That is worthy of death. But one guy still has the audacity to ask Jesus, like, Jesus, please, if you can remember me. And Jesus is like, because you ask. Which means the relationship with God is free. It's not based on any conditions of who you are and what. How do you have a relationship with God? I think a lot of times people complicate it because they, they either sometimes they, have, they, they want to keep you in a place or they feel like you have to jump through a hoop, right? Mm. I feel like every single structure works that way. You know, there's any elite group of people, group of people, they'll say, oh, we accept everybody. But the sooner you show that you don't really agree with everything, it's like, ah, no, that guy's an outcast. But with God, it's different. It's like, come, the same way you are, come as you are. Let's have a relationship. Let's talk. Let's, I want you to grow with me. I want to see who, I want to know who you are. Yeah, but I cuss. Okay, cool. But, but if you spend time with me, you begin to know my heart. You begin to know the way I am. But God, I'm Elson. <laughs> yeah, but God, I'm Elson. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's it, you know, it's the same thing. Like tonight, you know, you, you would have, you can, you would, people would say, Oh, you know, even with me, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're not a real Christian, you're fake. I'm like, bro, if you only knew the reason why I still do what I, is because if God's love, not because of me, I'm like, if I had, my, if my own way is not a good way, when, but when I think about, when I constantly think about how much God loves me and how much that relationship has been to me, it's what keeps me grounded. It's what keeps me going. It's what keeps me that thing of, I know this is what people need. I know this is the message I need to be able to share. I know at the end of the day, and if I look at myself and I try to weigh myself, I'll, 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 there's a lot of shame. There's a lot of things that yeah. I'll be like, ah, I can't, but I'm like, but then I cannot just allow this message not to go out. I'm like, this is the truth and this is what I believe. And I realize that when people have a relationship with God, they are, they're less open to deception. I think a lot of people, people are like, oh, there's a, there's a crisis with these papas opening up churches. I'm like, that's because people don't have relationships with God. They're going to give a guy a lot of money because he's, he's the one who's hearing from God. Imagine if, that, I mean, imagine if that guy, that pastor that spoke to Stripe, there's so many ways it could have manipulated that situation. Mm -hmm. He could have shown there's a guy, what, here, who I'm seeing, and what, and Stripe would be like, hey, that's me. And it'd be like, but if you give, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's why the, the Bible even says yeah. the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I generally feel there's people who are gifted with prophecy. They have visions. They see things. Maybe even you guys, maybe in life you've like, man, I, that was weird, but I saw that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's so many people who are gifted that I know for a fact that from the weirdest situations, man, where somebody, somebody even know like, you know, this person is like, he doesn't go to church, but they'll call you up. I'm like, Abel, I don't know how to say this, but I saw this in a vision. And what I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just like, yo, you know what? If God is talking, God is talking. Let's hear that out. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah. I think in uh, just. So I, 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 I just, I, just down to it. It starts with, the, yeah. it starts with Christ. It really just starts with Christ. And then uh, because Christ is the one that took our place. You know what I'm saying? When we should have been punished for our sins. 
And that's what it means. It's, it's, it's accepting. So the, the word of God is broken into two. There's the New Testament and the Old Testament. And the New Testament is what is called the New Covenant, the New Agreement. And the Old Testament is based on the law. The law means you, if you are, your life, your relationship with God is based upon your obedience to the law. And this is where it was wild for a lot of guys, right? <laughs> but now it's like, okay, your relationship with God is based upon Christ. So that when God sees you, he sees Christ on the inside of you, not you. Because you, you're like, you know, you're still, you know, the same dude, right? But at the same time, with Christ on the inside of you, it's, it's a deeper relationship. Because that purity that Christ took, he, he took everything that could be flawed about you on his back. Does yeah. that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, there's something weird that you want to ask something? You want to move on to something else? All right, you can, you can take us. I've yeah. got something coming up later anyway. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want this episode to be just too gospel-like because mm -hmm. then we're going to put people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I want to like pick your opinion on. But mm -hmm. there's something weird that, that has happened to me periodically over the past four years. Yeah. And it could happen one year and then lays dormant, like herpes, and then just like pops <laughs> up again. Yeah, good example, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me show you this first text. So I'm going to show you three texts from uh -huh. three different people. Okay. So take a look Should at I that. Should I read it? Yeah, you, yeah, okay, you can cool. read that. It says, hey, the dream about you being in an accident, God speaks it has come the fourth time, and at times it is just to confirm. God speaks in different ways. Each of us, God has called us for a reason. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the plans he has for us are good, not evil. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call unto me, I'll show you things in secret places. There can be a warning from God. We pray for protection, and God covers us under his wings. Check if you've gone out of sight with God. Happy independence. Yeah. Okay, so. so that was the first one? This was the first one. Right. So let me give context. Out of the blue, I had somebody never met mm -hmm. they we are friends on facebook and they said i i've had a couple of dreams and in these dreams you've had an accident mm. and you've died in that accident mm. um oh no thank you so th that was the text that they sent to me now they give yeah. you the scriptures uh, as reference and the second person was an ex mm. she is from Swaziland, not religious at all. Mm -hmm. So when she moved back to Swaziland, so she lived here for quite a while. So when she moved back to Swaziland, she began having those dreams as well of me being in an accident. Mm -hmm. And so she texted me and then said, okay. you see that text? All right. So I read it. Yeah. Hello, you okay? Nigga, are you safe? <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? Had a bad dream. Hope you're okay. What about you in an accident, car accident? Right. Yo. Um, the third person, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing. So that's the third uh -huh. text. Okay. And, and um, I, read it? It, no, it's okay. Okay. So three different people, they are not connected. Mm -hmm. The last two that really shook me is I was, I was not in Z. I was in a different country. And I parked my car. And I, I'm locking my car so I cross the street. And there's an old lady who kept staring at me. Mm -hmm. uh, this was at a. This was at um. This was in town, mm -hmm. and she kept staring at me. And so she then walks up to me and says, "Listen, I. This is weird, but the car that you're locking now is. I saw you. I saw you getting into an accident with that car. And mm. you died. That shook me." The last one was my sister, the one that comes right after me. She's in Australia now. Uh, before she moved to Australia, she, li she, she lived in, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. She studied law, and she was in class. On two occasions, she had the same dream. And when she couldn't take it anymore, she was in class, mm -hmm. wide awake, and she began having that dream as she is in class, Dang. seeing the same thing. Mm. The one thing all these people had in common, it was the exact same car, the exact same color, and it was always an accident. And you die in every accident. And I die in every accident. Hmm. And only just recently did I also begin to have a similar dream 
where I am driving, and it always happens the same thing, and I drive off a cliff. Dang. It's a curve, but my car won't turn. No Sivanga trips for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> this is why they're comprehensive, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. I've spoken to a couple of people. They have told me what they think it means. Yeah. And it, that freaked my sister out. That freaked my mom out. We, they stopped mm. eating. They started fasting. They began praying. And so, it goes away for, like I told you, it goes away for, 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 for a short period. And then it pops up again. So, now it hasn't happened for nearly a year. Oh. But I know that the same thing will pop up again. Are, are you scared of driving now? No, I've, I've never. You know how much I drive. And <laughs> you're a reckless driver. You know yes. how much and I you're drive. you're a reckless yes. driver. <laughs> Stickers hey. was above 180 <laughs> on a straight what? road. No. I kid you not. I okay, kid you that, not. That is. So what do you, Always. What, what do you think that is? <laughs> you're asking me what is the thing. <laughs> well, not the speeding. <laughs> it, it is, you know, um, man. Um, I'll tell you what. Yeah, what do you... Okay, what my what, pastor what, didn't what, say. Yeah. So, what he said to me... So, I've had like three or four encounters with, um, with prophets and pastors. Mm-hmm. But in line with this, what he said to me is... Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. The devil has got power to kill you. Mm. What he said to you is... There is harm that is in your way. Mm-hmm. Right, that is meant to come your way. God can protect you, but He won't, because He wants you to ask Him to do so. Mm. And so, because He loves you, He is sending you messages yeah. to say, "Ask me for my protection, so mm. I protect you." Mm. Is how some pastor interpreted it, mm. that you are meant to be harmed. Mm-hmm. And if God didn't love you the, the way that he did, he would not send people to tell you. Yeah. So he keeps doing that to say, it doesn't matter how many people yeah. will pray for you. Yeah. Unless you do it yourself, yeah. then he's going to do it. Is how they saw Have you done it? I will. Huh? Yeah, I don't know if he hears me though. <laughs> Well, you're alive. I'll, I'll, I'll honestly, for now. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I, will, I will honestly say like... Um, I, I love his interpretation because the thing is, um, you know, the, the word of God says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The, right. The, the devil has no, no good intentions about anybody. You know what I'm saying? It's, all, it's always like it comes, cool, like your friend, okay, cool, but it comes to steal, kill, and destroy, like erase everything about you, legacy, whatever, right? That's his motto. That's his motto, right? So when it comes to destruction or this death and whatnot, that is definitely... If that many people are showing, which means like, yeah, the devil is trying to come and steal, kill, especially kill. But one of the things is God says, and I, and I share this so many times with people, Proverbs 18, verse 21. It says, life and death is and in the, the power, power of, of the, the tongue. tongue. Yeah. And those that love it will eat its fruit. Right. And then so if the enemy comes to steal, kill or destroy, then the God says, I think even the scripture that was shared, I know the plans I have for you. This is God saying this. I know the plans. Plans to make you prosper. Plans so that you everything will work out in your favor. Like that's God's plan. The hmm. devil, on the other hand, is like, nah. But he's just very good at packaging himself in a way that, ah, brah, relax. So the thing is, like, God's like, this is you have to what you want to work out. You have the power to speak, but where is it coming from? The authority has to be recognized as the authority from God. There are the, some guys who tried to cast out some demons in the book, uh, The Seven Sons of Sceva. So they went and they said, uh, we, we cast you out in the, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches about. So they had no relationship with Jesus. <laughs> they Just had Paul nothing. About. Right. But they tried to cast, him, cast out demons because they saw it, right? So the beauty about this is that God genuinely, genuinely wants to have a relationship with you. Like genuinely wants to have a relationship. And it's one of those things, like that's how I even tell people, like that's why when people say, oh, those are the ones who are preaching the gospel, they're like this, like this. I'm like, look, you said your sister is maybe doesn't do church a lot, right? But when she sensed that there's something wrong, 
she went and warned the person because of love. I'm like, this is why we share the gospel. You're looking at the person, oh no, I know these are, ah, those guys are fake, blah, blah. but is that the gospel? And I'm like, when people hear the gospel, it comes as love, it comes as, you know, comes from, you know what I'm saying? You didn't think like your sister's being weird. You're just like, dang, this is, there's something happening here. And this is like different people every year. Man, you are doing a great job with your work and everything like that, and you're doing life. But I generally feel like with everybody, and I say this with everybody, man, a relationship with God is, is, is not, it, the beauty about having a relationship with Christ is that it's a sign of, I cannot do this on my own, right? You're saying you're, you know that danger is going to come, everything is going to come. But the question is, are you able to handle it on your own? And that's what the old and new covenant is like. The old covenant is, I can live by the law. I can be good enough to do life. Okay, cool. And then the New Testament is like, yo, we are done. <laughs> You're like the thief next to Jesus. Is like, yo, I am done. If I, if I try to do this on my own, I, I will die. Like, I'm gone. And that's what, for me, I generally believe Christians, Christianity starts with. Right? It's a surrender of understanding, like, I cannot do this on my own. If there's the, if in life, or I can't not run everything by myself. And that's why even I tell Christians, like, y'all should be the most humble people. Because sometimes people like to pick up stones and just, ah, no, this person, I'm like, y'all, it starts, because y'all came to Jesus with the first confession of, we are sinners, right? Right? So you need to be able to understand that that was a process. So that's why I generally feel like everything that God is trying to tell you right now through the warnings, it just, it really generally is, is from a place of love. I wish, I wish there was, I mean, I lost a very good friend of mine and he was a pastor about two weeks ago in a car crash, you know, and I was, what's, I mean, I cried so hard because this is one of those guys I just generally had just, just a big heart, loving person. He also had a very strong gift of, of prophecy, like this and sights. Like he could tell people like, I know what house number you live at, whatnot, right? Young guy. And I was talking to him the day before and he was like, dude, I'm driving from Copper Belt. Let's meet in the sock. I'm like, oh snap, I'm in Livingston. Let's meet. I was like, nah, I need to get to Malawi and whatnot. And died in Kabwe. Wow. Like on his way from Congo, he's driving down and died in Kabwe. And I just could I couldn't believe it because I was just like, my, I'm even when I was posting, I'm like, 1425, this guy called me. And then the next day he dies? Like, if, if he, like, I don't know what it is about you that God would warn you. And I was like, God, this guy had a gift of problem. He could see things, right? Mm. He could, anyone that knew uh, David, like, knows this guy had a gift. But this guy... I don't know if there was ever a warning in his life, but him and I talked about everything. He never said anything like that. But you, for you to come and tell me that, Elson, different people. Are no, no, I'm no, like no, my no, G. I said earlier about I would be surprised that if God showed us a future grace. and this guy's a pastor. All I can tell you is <laughs> that there is like one, the anyway. grace of God. <laughs> you know the saying, like the word of God says, the grace of God leads men to repentance. Like it's the goodness of God. I would take that, like you know, I don't like to tell people like fear leads them to Christ, but I'm just like you know, the grace of God. That's that's some. That's some God level love, man. Like Dude. where people are like, yo, yeah. there is something that the devil was like, and I'm sure the devil was like, dang it. Elson. <laughs> Could have had this dude, but. You've gotten the warnings, so. Uh, where it even gives your mother what to specifics on what she's praying what I mean. about. Like, it, bro, it was, it was, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's one or two details that I left out, but mm -hmm. generally, and it was really specific down to the vehicle. Jeez, bro. Damn. Is, do you still have the same car? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I do, but um, I, I don't use it anymore. Okay. But is it the, the VW, the white one? It's the VW, That's yeah, exactly. I said the color, right? I said, yeah. Remember yeah. I said it was a white uh, vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. White VW. The, the white yeah, yeah. VW. Oh, I see why you want me to start driving that thing. Yeah, you can look at it. <laughs> you can have that shit. The, the, the time my car was in an accident, I didn't yeah. have a car for like a month. Uh -huh. He kept offering me that car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trying to pass it on now. <laughs> He sacrificed his friend. <laughs> now you know why. Can we can we talk about your one, sorry? One thing we did mention yeah. is where we're shooting from. Yeah, what, what and they gave us amazing food. Elementos mm. Hotel. Uh, it's in Rhodes Park. What, what's this road again? Lucasta Drive. Yeah, yeah. We are at uh, Elementos. I know. I know. Lamik is gonna put it in the intro. You are. 
It's an, it's an <laughs> intro. All right, great. Hey, but can we talk about your comedy career, man? Yeah. Um, oh, you suck, bro. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Able, you won, <laughs> you won, uh, what? Most, hater. Most, hater. most oh, outstanding hate. comedian Come on at now. Uh, what, in Goma Awards. What? Come on now, yeah. You yeah, lied, yeah. And, and, and you yeah, yeah. won. Yeah, Best yeah, comedian yeah. at the Goma Awards. No, no, that, no that's know. funny. Now that is what's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. And your Haters going hate. Potatoes are going potatoes. <laughs> and your victory was received yeah. with mixed feelings. Yeah. And Wait, uh, so the, the utmost social media backlash. Kalinga. Mixed feelings are yeah. Kalinga. 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 <laughs> My brother. Mixed feelings implies that there was a part of the argument that was for him being funny. On the podcast you are. <laughs> Right now, Today yeah, is. you are. Today, you are. I'm seriously hating to the level. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> come on. Paid, yeah, go, go, I go. I paid go. money to uh, go and see you, bro. Uh-huh. Ah, jeez, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when was this? When Q was around. Ah, All the time we did the... We're together, music club. Yeah, yeah music that club, was yeah. Like, you, that, you, was like, that was like one of my worst sets. Oh, you, so you know you bombed, right? No, yeah, that one, that one I was in. I wasn't on my egg. Because my bank account is funnier than you are. Yeah? Your bank... Oh! <laughs> No, that was that was not one of my best sets. I'll be very honest. Like that time, I just come back from the states. I didn't, I didn't really. You were not my, ready for yeah, that. Yeah, I was not ready for he that. He wasn't one. ready. I wasn't ready for that one. Even I felt it. And then the problem was also like the whole intro. There was a mess up with the intro. There was a way so that threw me off. You know what I'm saying? Like we had already rehearsed with music and everything, and the first joke was based on how the intro is going to be. So right. the moment oh, they mess crap. that up, it happens to DJs yeah, as well. You're bring it, just, and then the DJ before yeah. he plays your songs, he messes oh. you up. <laughs> like, it's just... I know so the, the feeling. Yeah, yeah, so it just threw me into, like, wing it survival mode, bro. Like, it was just like, oh, man. Because yeah. the, the jokes were, like, planned. But then again, even when you won that Tengoma mm -hmm. Award for what? Yeah. Uh, most Outstanding Comedian. Yes. There was so much... <laughs> <laughs> backlash. Backlash. Social media. <laughs> Everybody said no. And then to yeah. prove that you were actually a comedian, I remember yeah. HK put up a show at um, exactly. Language Conference Center. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about the backlash to start with? Did you feel it was undeserved? Like, it wasn't well placed? You felt you were a good comedian and yeah. people just being haters for no reason? So, I mean, first, so first of all, I'll start with the beginning. Like, how I yeah. got into comedy was 2011, right? Right. A friend of mine, Ali Nani, used to do straight up stand up. And eventually, that's how he went up and even brought Trevor Noah. So me and HK were so, some of his first Wait, comedians. Alinani Spectacles, yes. Alinani. Yeah. He's, so He used to do comedy. Yeah, so he started a comedy thing. Oh, he him wasn't doing comedy. Chilu. So I was Chilu about and, to faint. Yeah. So right. Chilu and I were very close friends. So Chilu was like, dude, you're one of the funniest guys I know. <laughs> Why don't you come and do stand-up? So we started this stand-up. We used to do it at, a, at the cinema at arcades. Yeah. And would have packed out shows. So imagine from 2011... So then what I'll do is with comedy, I would do it differently. I'll do it circuit wise. Like you're going with a group of guys, right? Uh -huh. So we'd even go. Out. My only time I've been to Kasama was to do comedy. Like we, right, you know, right. so comedy really took me. We did a lot of these shows. People would be familiar with my jokes. But at some point, I even made it known to the guys. I'm like, listen, guys, I've been doing it longer than some of you guys. Like I remember when Mwana Jinguala came in. I remember yeah. when Chinglis came in. I met Chinglis when he was still in uh, at Yunza. Right. So a lot of these guys, I'm like, guys, I've been doing it longer than some of you guys, and I just want to do a special. I like, I want to get all the jokes I've been doing all these years for a special. So I pulled out from doing a lot of jokes. So it also kind of made me a bit rusty. So what I didn't know is that they had taken some of my clips and submitted them to the Ngoma Awards. Oh. And then when I found out I was nominated, I'm like, who submitted? Then Ching was like, yeah, no, we submitted your stuff. And then I was nominated in top three. Me, Mwana Jinguala, and uh, Ndine, uh, no, Ndine, not Ndine, Emma, right, by Emma. So we go, we're at Ngoma Awards, and it's not a big deal that I've been nominated. I'm not hearing any backlash that how could Abel be nominated, what yeah. not. Because they didn't think you would win. Yeah, I didn't think I would win. <laughs> I didn't think I you didn't would win either. I, I was You're convinced. Shocked. Bro. I was convinced <laughs> that the world was very much like, okay, like the Zambia, I thought like it was very Facebook comedy focused, right? Like comedy for them is Shimumbi, whatever. Pause that. And Shimumbi is funny in person. Pause yeah. that. Mm -hmm. If you, I asked you earlier, yeah. if someone ever asked you to convince them if God exists, mm -hmm. 
you winning that award <laughs> is proof that God exists. <laughs> now that right there is what you need to do. Oh my God! <laughs> so listen, so listen. So what happens is we are, so now we're just like, oh man, how are we going to do this? And so then we're sitting there and I'm telling the guys, I'm telling Emma and the manager God, I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, guys, so whoever wins, let's all go up. And so like, you know, we're all in this, we're brothers, we're what, what, what. In my head, I, I'm thinking one of them, I won't say which one, but I was like, <laughs> this guy, this guy's going to win. He's yeah. more, people know him more for comedy, whatnot. And so I'm sitting there and I just generally feel it was one of those votes where my fans just said, oh, Abel, tick. <laughs> I do not think people voted for me because they just knew my comedy. Because comedy for me is like theater, right? Like, do you, do you go, go and watch plays? But the people that go and watch plays, they know all the actors. They're like, oh, yeah, this one is a great actor. But those are not people like on TV and whatnot. So I, when I get announced that I've won, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I don't even have a speech. The crowd is oh, you quiet. There? Yeah, I was there. Oh, the, the crowd, crowd quiet. was like, wow. I'm talking and the crowd's like, still like, eh? Because they don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know whether I should boo. I think they don't know what. Right? I think it's it's yeah. like, Wait, is it a gospel category? Exactly. Or? So I'm just like, thank you. I don't even have my words together. I go backstage. <laughs> so I sit down and there's um, one of the guys from movie TV and he has, so he has this, they have a Facebook page, which has a lot of followers. So he's there and he has the phone. So it's Angel period and he has the phone. And I guess he's the one who posted that I've won. And he goes, Abel, look at this. Bro, have you ever seen numbers going increasing <laughs> like in real time, like 100, 200, 300? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, what? No, it's rigged. Judge it. That's how you like, oh, man, it's going to be crazy. HK yeah. now calls me and goes, Abel, boy, because remember, he's been with me from 2011. He says, boy, ah, no. Let's 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 do a show. So what we're gonna do is this is the first time and last time in my life I've ever staged something in terms of like you know like I know that I'm in position like doing this like let's stage something yeah. and make it look like what this is the one time and this is now giving away the secret. So HK goes, dude, let's do a special for you, but we're gonna do it like this. I'm gonna write a whole article anonymously that as the Zambian people were challenging you to make us laugh, and then let's make a show out of that. And they did that. So then he sent guys to my house, took a picture of me, and then he asked me, what do you want to call the show? So I said, ah, you know what? All my life, it's always been about this said, this said about me and whatnot. So I'm like, we're going to call it Rumor Has It. Rumor so has the it. first thing I just wrote, challenge accepted, posted it up. Oh, man. People started jumping on board. Sponsors, ah, no, let's da, 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 da. And, and so, and then I used that opportunity just to be like, let me get into character. Yeah. So... People are now like on my pay, like people are waiting for me. Cause you know, when, when you're, when people are talking about you, people are now waiting for what you're going to, the first post that yeah, you're going to put. Yeah. So the first post I put up was, I'll take it back. If Messi takes back his Ballon d'Or. <laughs> oh, the people are like, you are I'm like, all right, we're off to a good start. That wasn't funny. And, no. <laughs> it was, it was, it was enticing people. Mm. So, so then it is on bro. And the day of the show comes bro. And, it is packed out. So <coughs> Bob Mkosha says, I'm going to open for you because I believe in your comedy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> but oh my goodness. So then, uh, what's his name? Bovix. Yeah. Where he's, in, he's like, I'll MC for you. And then guess who the other opening acts are? The two guys I was nominated against. Moana Jinguala. Yes, Moana Jinguala and Emma. Yeah. And I remember Magnus is one of my closest friends and he says, Exe. Everyone was killing it. I was scared for you. I was scared. I was just like, mm, it's wild. So I get up on stage and I'm back. And I won't even say, I won't even lie. Like that day, I think the spirit of God was also, I was so peaceful. Like I didn't feel scared. My heart wasn't skipping. Someone comes and tells me, oh, the mayor is here. And the first joke I have, like just comes to me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make fun of the mayor. <laughs> And the moment I get up on stage and I crack that mayor joke because, ah, man, the, the crowd, crowd lights goes. up. And then after that, now I go into my stories. I hit at the DJs. I'm like, why do you guys always play my music? A national morning. And then we're going to a story about that because I'm like, y'all making me look like I make music for widows. And then the next thing, I start doing this whole story about 
like weed because one of my uncles was a serious weed smoker. Like it was <laughs> one of my uncles was a serious weed smoker. <laughs> and the last joke <laughs> that the people will not know. <laughs> so one of my last jokes <laughs> one of my last jokes was 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 it's, uh, it's gonna be are we, are we okay? Are we okay? Give us a do we even have to tell the pup? Oh so, gosh! This the pup is going to be explained to our viewers. So, uh, how do we explain this to the viewers? I know, right? <laughs> there was a moment of distraction. I'll explain. I was, was the, the moment was the bad of guy. distraction. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> He's going love it. Let me, expl- uh, let me explain what just happened. So, oh, what you don't see is <laughs> we are at a hotel. We're at a hotel, and so in the middle of Abel explaining <laughs> what he just explained, there's a woman <laughs> with the biggest ass <laughs> we've ever seen. <laughs> she just w- walks right behind this. <laughs> And we all freeze. <laughs> and we all freeze. <laughs> ah. Including the Christian. <laughs> I was still telling the story. I was still telling the story. At least, at least I was committed to try to finish the story. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. You were. I stopped. Yeah, were. I, was, I was literally trying to help you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> the flesh is weak. <laughs> but the first time, the moment I just realized Elton was, Elton was gone. Ah. Then I was like, oh, don't you guys. Oh, ah. then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, so anyway, back to, back to the story. I, I uh, called I called HK that day uh, yes. that you guys started guys had setting up setting up the event. Yeah, and I actually asked him, dude, <laughs> are you sure Abel is strong enough <laughs> to <laughs> to go after Bobunkosha Mona Chingwala? Yeah, and HK said he believed in you. Yeah. And the story you're sharing now, I think, just ties into what HK, the conversation Bro. HK and I had. And he kept sending me snippets of what was going on that night on WhatsApp. There are people who did not like me, who I know showed up there and literally told people, we're here to see him bomb. They we, came to see We are fall. here to see him bomb. Bro, by the time I did the last joke, uh, it's even on YouTube. Um, it's, it, I did this narrative about how, like... Our elections were still coming up. And yeah. I just said, like, you guys, like, why do we do elections the old way? Like, why don't we? So I, I used the narrative of what if our elections were done the way Wakanda does elections? Like, basically, selecting a le- leader through a fight. But then the way I did the whole narrative, like, yeah. all those guys saying they're not going to challenge our political party leaders and whatnot. And by the time we dropped that last joke, like, it was so crazy <clears throat> because I used... Uh, HH as representative of Mbaku. So when he comes in and says it's challenge day, like the whole crowd at the same time caught the line. Yeah. And I, I had another joke that was supposed to follow, but at that moment I'm like, this is it. This is that. Leave that all I'm the like, clapping in. I'm able to Muzuka and it was a standing ovation. And nice. people were just like, okay, you know what? You you killed it. And that's and I think genuinely after that moment, <clears throat> I was done. I was like, you know what? I ain't doing this no more. Yeah. Time. Like I was like, I'm kind of done. We we had, I think I would have been better if I had more shows after because we that's when we hit COVID. Because we had a plan. Right. We wanted to go to Dubai. Yeah. We're talking about some Zambians in Dubai, like, okay, why don't we come and do the same rumor has it in Dubai? Like we had big plans with HK like after that. But then COVID, COVID hit yeah. and it just changed the game. So that's why I said like when I did that show with um with Q, Q. and the Goliath, but like I was so rusty, man. Like there was no way like but it helped me because when I when when I did not when I realized that at that moment, I had to go to old jokes to pull up just to like, ah, oh, let me get a last laugh. And then people were like, you know, but it was like, no, because now then I told the guy, I'm like, you know what? I want a comedy show in L.A. So we started looking for we got uh, I did my first comedy set in L.A. in October oh, wow. and that crowd. I was a bit scared of because I'm like, that's the cancel crowd, man. It was, it was, it was, you it was really, yeah, yeah. Yet. So, but that was really kind of started boosting, uh, started getting me back into that feeling of like, you know what? You depressed him. Yeah. 
<laughs> he, he needed therapy after that. Yeah. No, True. no, I won't. I won't even. Ta- I won't even hold it against him, man. Like it was just. It was just not my best set. It just. Dude. It had a bad <clears throat> beginning, and then it, remember, like I was introduced twice, yeah. and it was just like because it had a bad beginning. It just didn't work out. I mean, I was like, why did we do sound check if we're gonna, you know, not start it the way we all planned it out and different right. things. So it just it threw Kill, me kills your off, mood, yeah. man. It threw Q me off. Q was a beast though. Ah, Q, Q, Q killed it. Oh. Ah, Q killed it, bro. Q killed it. Q killed Q. it. He murdered all of you guys. I know everybody. Like, ah, badly. Yeah. Badly, man. He, how, how, and we don't talk about this show. It's not Q's show. And then... Well, wait, wait, say what you want to say. I want to hear what no, you want to say. No, no, no. I was, I was trying to find out how his uh, show went after. Remember there was a show in October? Yeah, after way he headlined it. Yeah. It was good. It was. It wasn't as good as his the first one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but it was good. It was good. All yeah. right, cool. Dude, what, speaking of LA, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, what's crazy about? I generally feel like Q is such for me from my experience such yeah. a humble guy, because when he came back, he, he bought us those tickets. Right, he, yeah, he did, could yeah. not believe how Zambians responded. Like I don't think he thought he was gonna kill it like mm. that. He was shaking. He was like, I am. I can't believe it. Like people were just like, and, and, and Jonathan, like who's uh, 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 Goliath, like who's who's the bigger one? Uh, Between uh, the, there was um, Jason, 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 Jason Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jason yeah. was the one who was just like, bro, you are you are as good as you should. Like it's almost like I think because Jason was the one who I think who got him, who brought Q. And, uh. and it was just like, bro, you nah, you he murdered that yeah, night. Dude, bro. Speaking of LA, uh huh. We hear you're moving to America. What's that about? <laughs> you thought it was a I, secret, right? Uh, you know, I don't like to talk about future plans. The 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 people in the village. <laughs> they'll start, they'll start. When they hear this, uh, yeah. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you one crazy thing. Yeah. Um, I went to LA the first time in 2015. I did a, I did a concert there, and ever since then, like I felt so at home. I, I kept on telling people, I said, I have a feeling I'm going to move to L.A. I have a feeling I'm going to live in L.A. Yeah. I have a feeling I'm going to move to L.A. That's like me and moving to Australia. Yeah, yeah, I have that feeling. I just, I just, I'm just. <laughs> and then it's crazy that the yeah. first booking I ever got for the tour was, and the longest time I, I stayed I'm, was Los Angeles. And I just generally feel like I don't know if it, it'll it happen or when it'll happen, but yeah. I've always felt very, like I've always felt that. And then when I went there, Everybody was like, you know, everybody's like, you've always been talking about it. How do you feel? And you know, the thing is, there's certain times when you, when you know something is going to happen, but then when you finally get there, yeah. you feel like you've settled in, right? Like you feel mm. like this is, I'm, I'm at peace. So it actually, even, even just the way it changed the way I'm even, cre- like how people were expecting me to drop an album last year. I was like, I delayed it because of that whole experience. Speaking of which, yeah, the Christian community is saying you lied about an album launch on 31st December, but it turned out you just did old songs on uh, yeah, the yeah, countdown night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be very honest about that. You so lied. I was <laughs> <laughs> no, so oh, I, 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 I guess was. Who's calling? Sorry. Yeah. Q. Ah, this guy. <laughs> Does he know that we're live? Q. Hey, good morning, sir. You're live. Well, it's, it's actually <laughs> evening where we are. We are shooting a podcast. We're live. I'm with Kalenga and Abel. You remember Abel? Yes, yes, yes. I, I do. I do. I do. Sorry, man. Sorry when you think it. I've got family over, so it was noisy. So I had to uh, rush off and, and go somewhere quiet. Who has family that visits them in January? <laughs> that, is, that is exactly the thing that is exactly the thing you see when there's the illusion that you've made it they, 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 they. <laughs> whose fault is that I don't know bro because we're all drinking water right now so <laughs> <laughs> getting the reality but yeah no it's not what we and thought eating cabbage. it's not how we thought the story. <laughs> I mean, you're the one that's posting photos with you and Loiso all over the place. Come on. It's not their fault. Hey, bruh, Instagram, bruh, I've learned that Instagram. Now I see how Slay Queen survived, (laughs) dog. Like, I see it because I posted pictures, like, I'll post pictures of what I'm doing, and people then believe that, oh, snap, this dude is bowling. I'm like, oh, so this is how Slay Queens do it. They post and make people, because the reality is never the same as what happens on the day. <laughs> nah, dude, we we were speaking about how amazing your show was um, when Abel was there. You, yeah, you killed it, man. 
Oh man, I appreciate you, man. No, that was. I think that's in my top three best shows I've set up. You know, you know what that means when someone says it's my top three. He means it's number three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you know what? Loki, I think it is it number no number two. I put it at number two. Okay, well, so what's the number three? I put it at number two. Number three is an impromptu wedding I emceed. Okay, not your wedding, right? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't my wedding. Uh, it was. It was no. I'm, I'm never. I'm never making that mistake. But anyway. Um, <laughs> what the mistake of doing uh, comedy at your wedding or getting married? Hey, you'll figure it out. What I'm saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's not to disappoint the family. Uh, there, right there. I, I was at this wedding and the MC didn't pitch. Right. For some reason, the MC didn't pitch. And so there was someone who was now trying to do the thing and it wasn't working. And then I was just like, you know what? I, this is I'm an evil human being to know that I can do this. And I'm just sitting in this crowd and watching this tank. And this is this couple's only day. Yeah. Well, together they might get married to other people later, but together <laughs> they don't okay, right? So then I was like, I went and I tapped him, and I was like, Yo, man, let me let me do it. I, I I do this, and then he was like, Oh, okay. And then I took over, and you know, like when the crowd is like, Oh my gosh, finally! And it was one of those. So that was dope. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's dope. Wow. And at number one, number one is performing in the U.S. for the first time. When was this? That was in 20, 2015. 2015 is when I, I toured the US for the first time. And so my first ever set there and I'm thinking, okay, will they get me? Will they, will they, will they? And yeah, they did. And it was that for me, it was like, oh, so it's possible. Q. Yeah. You went to the US. Yep. And you left. Yes. A Zimbabwe. <laughs> the fuck kind of Zimbabwe are you? And left. <laughs> No, because it, 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 there's like, um, see, if you're... Abba, Abba, if Abba, you Abba, Abba. Future, you say no, what? Listen, if you don't have a future beyond a certain point, yeah. you can do that. Me, I didn't want a Tich Mataz situation. You remember Tich Mataz? <laughs> I remember Tich Mataz. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want that. I didn't want to do that. And because I, 21 Savage, okay, I don't have a Jay Z that's going to come and 21 Savage me and get me out and sort out my immigration. I don't have that. So if I had done that and done comedy, then blown up, then people say, no, but this guy, <laughs> you get what I mean? Right. Then, because yeah, I had that amount of confidence in myself. But there are days that I'm like, I should have just stayed, man. Yeah, I hear that. All right, bro. We're gonna let you go. You wanna say what's up? Hey, Q. What's I'll chat. We'll chat on WhatsApp. On <laughs> Are you well? Yo, I'm great, Abel, man. So, Abel, we have a story. I don't know if I should tell the story, Abel. Should I tell it? No, let's please talk do. on WhatsApp. No, please do. Please what do you have WhatsApp. to hide? What do you have to hide? WhatsApp. <laughs> Q. Okay, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> Like to this day, Abel, I feel so bad. <laughs> Are you it's, serious? It's, 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 okay. I feel so so bad, uh, Elton. It's it's centered around what happened after the show. Oh, seriously? Something happened after the show. Abel was there. I feel so so. Can we bad. just hear it? Oh, do you know what it was is? Now? It, was it the the pickpocketing? Yes. Ah, okay, okay, cool. No, I'll tell them after. I'll tell them about it. Okay, tell tell them the story. Yeah, you can yeah. tell them the story. Yeah. I, I really was vibing with the chick and I feel like it was my fault. And then after that, I didn't know what to do. It's like, what do I do here? Like, I, I didn't know. And I, I, I'm i still going to get a gift to, a, yeah, to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, brother. No, thanks a lot, man. I right, appreciate you guys. All right, cool. Thank you guys and keep doing what you do. You guys are amazing. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Oh, snap. Okay. <laughs> So, I have two questions. I wanted to ask you about what happened with Tish Mataz, but I don't know if you want to hear the story. No, first. Tish Mataz, just the deportation is yeah, about, deported. right? He got he big got... in South Africa, got rich and all, then he got deported and he had to leave everything in South Africa. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Because it got too big. Are you serious? Let, let me was, tell you, let me the tell biggest you something. Presenter I, don't, I don't blame South Africans for their xenophobia because when Zimbabweans move to SA, they're not humble about shit. Right now, the group CEO for MTN hmm. is Zimbabwean. When Zimbos move there, they don't they don't look for these humble jobs to be the cashier. No, yeah. <laughs> they want to be the CEO. Yeah, <laughs> and you think that the locals there are, are going to sit that? there and be and, and be happy about it? Wow. No, I'm <laughs> like no. Your ass needs to leave or die. 
Ujamaa yeah. comes wow, first. Dude, serious? he left everything. He had board houses and Kimbo Santa Rogers, and, same yeah, thing. Kimbo Rogers here in Zambia, so yeah. Another Zimbabwean. So <laughs> yeah, you know, another Zimbabwe. Back to Zimbabwe? Yeah. Kimbo so Rogers. So he couldn't yeah. sell those houses or what? Uh, I think it's also in the way he was deported. Yeah, it's in the yeah. way because you're yeah. given like 28 or 48 hours. Mm, why? Yeah. Like, did he commit a crime? Something of the sort, eh? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, can't remember. I, I, but I, he, there's an episode where he shares a story. I'll, I'll give you the link. So it's a Bushiri move. Where <laughs> <laughs> had to cross the border. <laughs> Dude, and then we're hearing stories. Or, or do you want to share the story that he yes. spoke okay. of first? Okay, cool. So, um, after the show, <laughs> so, so, t- so he had invited somebody. Right, he had invited somebody to because after the show, he did say a chick, so you can, yes, can say exactly. it. Yeah. So he's invited a chick. So what had happened was, after the show, we the owners of of um, the music club said, "Oh, listen, there's this which was well, that Nigerian guy, so you booga, yo lo lo lo." Yes, Kiss Daniel. So Kiss yeah. Daniel had a show that night just right across by the theater there. Yeah, right? yeah. So they said, "Hey, listen, if you guys want to go there, we can give you security and we can give you like tickets." So I, I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm the Zambian comedian here, so I'm the host. So I'm like, cool. You get what do you guys want to do? Do you want to go somewhere quiet or do you want to go? They're like, oh, cool. Let's go there. Is there a VIP section there? It's like, yeah, cool. Let's go to the VIP section. Cool. So the chick is like, okay, cool. I'll come along with you guys. So we start heading there. And now, before she arrived, I told the guys, I'm like, listen, guys, wherever your phones are, put them somewhere, tuck them in that part of your gene where, like, it doesn't matter where anybody touches or you will feel it, right? I said, because even these shows, even when you get inside, there's just, there's going to be some brothers who think, ah, they will try to pick. I said, especially the entering, any place that you have to enter in. I just like, I don't like the crowd because I learned that from a lot of these events. Bro, now she came later on. So she came met us when we're leaving. So I think the problem is I didn't give that debrief <laughs> to her. her. Yeah. Bruh, we get into the place first and now as we're entering the VIP, this is like the V, this is like, you know what people like saying Chintu Wingi and then you're going into VIP. VIP. Yeah. Yes. Just at the VIP, there's even cops there. Jason, Jonathan, Q goes through. I'm like, hey, is everybody good? Coco. She passes. I'm last because I'm just trying to make sure everybody's good. Right. Bro, no sooner than. And he said, like, they were vibing. Everything was cool. Yeah. Bro, she goes, my, um, phone's gone. my phone. My Not even my, my phone, my phones. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Now we're just like, who? So immediately I tell the guys, like, just the most suspecting Negroes who are just standing there, just like with no plan. Yeah. Like, why are they right there? I'm like, grab those three owns. Just, so they start grabbing, searching guys, man, nothing on them. Jeez. And it was just like, it was like a downer, bro. And so now like she was depressed. She's like, I just want to go home. I'm just like, yeah. So it was, it was just one of those situations. Okay, cool. So I had to make sure that she gets home. And that's how like Q was like, Bro, like I'm so sorry. I'm just like, nah, it's okay. Like you guys go and make sure you enjoy the yeah. event. So he didn't smash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Does it sound like <laughs> she was? This is why this is why he's saying he's still touched about till this day because <laughs> that was yeah. And no, like, you, I bet she had a big ass. <laughs> I just, oh, I just, well, com- comments you being Q. <laughs> Q being so Q. all I'm just saying is like that's the situation that basically happened. Like she 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 got both her phones stolen like Jeez. that night. Yeah, bro. Like, but you told and, them and huh? you warned. But them. I warned them. She but wasn't she there, there when she warned. wasn't there. No, for the, but she's for the been here long yeah. enough. I'm sure she would know this. Because I warned them like while the show had just ended, we're all of us backstage and we're talking to the owners and we're just like we're just like okay, what do you guys want to do tonight? What? So I said okay, guys, if we're gonna go to that event. All I'm just saying is beware for pickpockets. Make sure your phones are tight. Yeah. Everything cool, cool. So when she came through, it was like it was basically like now people are allowed to come and talk to us and whatnot. That's yeah. how her and Q started vibing and whatnot, talking, right? So that's that's really how that's that the story. <laughs> that's Damn. how the night ended, man. Dude, S- speaking of your American escapades. <clears throat> I'm, I'm hearing more stories. There's so much around you about America. So are you moving to America or not? You didn't answer that question. Uh, and secondly, 
as you answer that, I, I'm add, uh-huh. adding uh, another question to that. Uh-huh. We're hearing you've signed with a record label in America. The same. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> No, We're hearing no, you've signed with no, a record label no. in America. Yeah. And this record label has actually got you uh-huh. studio time with the same studio where Drake, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z yeah. record from. Ah. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So <laughs> now, now it's going to sound how, like... How, a, how deep did I dig okay. when it comes All to right. researching so you? you, you yeah. dig you dug pretty deep. Yeah. Um, That's what she said. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what kind of thing? What's happening that you would have to say yeah. that? Because... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what shocked me about yes, these, these stories? Yes. Uh-huh. If, if they are true, uh-huh. how are you getting these deals? OC has been in America for the longest time, hasn't even got one of these deals, man. The uh, accent. Uh, the accent. Uh, <laughs> no. Anyway, um, yeah, tell us more. So, so I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Um, with me, um, I, it's not a deal. So yeah. I'm still working with, uh, I'm still unsigned. I'm still independent in the same way. Right. But I can honestly tell you, like one of the biggest testimonies for me was this trip. Because... Mm. I knew I needed to go and I had I had partnered with another business partner and we had we said okay cool we're gonna then um, halfway through they went through some stuff so we, we, they pulled away so I was left now solo funding my trip right and I had told um, uh, excuse me I had told my, my the guy I'm, I'm I'm touring with like hey leave your leave your schedule open so imagine <clears throat> I've denied bookings for two whole months right now I'm stuck financially, everything. And I just told God, I'm like, God, I'm going to go mm. no matter what. Bro, how, how it even happened, the way gigs just sort of popped up out of nowhere in the last way that helped me, like, even up to the last day, like, I was just buying tickets. and Because, again, like, you know, in my situation, you also have to make sure that your home is covered for those two months. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you just don't get up and say, I'm going to marry. No, like, rent, everything is covered, everything's cool, fees, what, done. So the kind of money that I had to make within that period of time was just God, man. Like, the testimony is crazy. So when we get there, the first show, I remember Sam, who plays keys for me, is like, mm, man, I'm nervous because this place is packed out. It's Nigerians dominant. There's left for African cultures. And they're like, no one knows who we are except the two tables of Zambians. <laughs> <laughs> right? The two tables of Zambians. Uh, flavors, the main act. There's different acts who've got dancers. Back, and it's just me and Sam. When we, I just said, Sam, there's no way God would bring us all the way from Zambia to come and do work stuff here. Yeah. And we killed it. I won't even lie. We killed it. Like the way we worked with the crowd, people were just like, people would come up to me like, you know what? You are the main act. <laughs> so I was like, I'm like, it was such a humbling experience. But that is what caught the eye of some people who were there who were investors. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? What do you need? Like, what do you need for this whole thing? So that's how we ended up shooting a documentary. That's how we got into the studio. And we did shoot, we did record at Tree Sounds, which is definitely the same place where- Drake, re- Jay-Z, yeah, Lil Usher, Wayne. Yeah. Sasha Fierce was recorded, was done there. Uh, wow. All of Drake's album except one. Um, we even found like albums like J. Cole's album and mm. so much. We, found, we, we did a funny picture where we went and mimicked, uh, there was a studio where J. Cole- I forgot who else is. I think Childish Gambino. What they were all in ones. So we all re, like we did the poses. It the whole, yeah, it was, yeah. Like, it was pretty cool. So um, speaker box of love below, and that was so. It was just so good. And what was so crazy is that you go in there and you're just like, dang. Like so, you kind of feel small. But the guy, the producer there, Brad. We just had to make <clears> it. <throat> like, hey, Brad, we're here to do some great music, and we had such a great relationship with him. So. I won't say I'm not yet signed in that sense. Right. I just have a distribution deal with which which I have, but in um, America, um, no. Currently, it's based in South Africa. Right. Okay. So what I'm tr- what I'm on the search for is trying to get like better management in terms of internationally. So I'm working with guys in the event and the guys in that. Talk, talk really, to some of the greats. I was about huh? to say, hey, <laughs> yeah. Talk to so, her management. I mean, I've talked. To, we've talked. We've yeah. had a talk with her manager, Carl. Um, great guy, ama- amazing. Was was open to have a conversation in the same way. So. I just generally feel like with with us as Zambians, one of the things, the beauty about that event is that it sh- it just kind of re- reassured right. a lot of self-doubt that had been built off over the years. And I didn't know how much self-doubt I'd had in myself until I got to that environment. 
because you know this environment here not i mean i've had a great following great people but there tends to be a sometimes like you said like there tends to be a bias to current music so that if people grab onto a sound then that's the sound they want to continuously hear so i feel like even when i hear different zambians with like a mixed sound or a different something crazy unique it's almost told like ah when they're not ready for that right so it's almost like you're fighting for the same crowd so what i keep telling people i said you know what if you feel like you've got a unique sound go to finland <laughs> you know go to Sw- <laughs> go to Swiss- yeah, yeah, yeah go to Sweden. Sweden. Like, if you're a rapper any, any yeah, yeah like try to plug yourself in places and that's what i think the beauty about sampa's story you know what i'm saying yeah, i just i even tell people like i don't know if sampa had started here it wouldn't have worked they, yeah i mean just there would have been so much of no yeah, can you try no like- can you feature this person no a problem in my fish for this day you know what i'm saying so it's almost like you had to prove yourself elsewhere and just like okay cool now i'm coming back to gift you people and i and i saw some people also come trying to come at her and like no why isn't she doing why isn't i'm like the girl has done enough man yeah, like man, <laughs> man. let her let it just let her be her yeah. you know, no one is ever a prophet in their own land true oh, of course my last question is it true you wrote the script for cabanana i used to be a scriptwriter yeah that was my first job i used Who to the hell be, knew this guy wrote Ka- Cabana was yeah. like what 99 2000 yeah, I was I was a teenager when I was writing How we write scripts <laughs> for Zambia's biggest soapy as a teenager as a teenager so I write scripts and I, that's I I used to write scripts uh Lawrence Thompson gave me my first job with the help of a lady called Chilufa Chilangwa she's the one who discovered You're me. writing what Jason Cabanano was going to yes, say in Cabanana yeah. but I'll tell wow. you the first as a teenager the, yeah I was 19 wow. I was about 19 18 when I started and uh I won't, I won't even lie the first time <laughs> my first script okay that's why I still have that's why I got a lot of respect for Kangwachileche because he saved my first script because my first script oh my gosh was I remember me, like, the man who was maybe in Kabanana look I he doesn't know that I wrote it what's this rubbish <laughs> <laughs> what is this rubbish this is a fish if I know we're just like I would just, I'm there like uh I was hurt Mr. Thompson had to sit me down I was like listen when you write that script is not you so don't get emotional Ex- separate that work from yourself and understand that you leave so everything is always up for discussion i think it was a great script but it's different you've taken it di- and they feel the difference yeah right so you're trying to bring a change but they felt it right they feel the change because maybe you're trying to push forward with the character And so now we had to find a way to talk to him and I remember Kangbachelecha comes he's like so he's telling me no it's okay you know what um I'll talk to him for you would we'll, we'll make some minor changes so it now brings the script okay vakalamba eh ni pesa potunga change that and it was like then you find like it was just like maybe a few things like maybe two three yeah. things and this whole script goes through and so after that um that's the reason my brother and I we when used to write so we said you know what we need we can't do much changes because there's a certain way the characters like their characters so i said let's create a new character that was when we created uh os mwape's first acting role and his first character which was chembo mm. and oh man that dude was a hit like it was crazy like we me him and i oh, created OS yeah really we good, made yeah. os's role chembo and his his chemistry and what i would go to yunza and sit at the back in the common rooms if i've if i've written the script just to see the reaction so right. and then if they, if i hear them clapping i'll be what I'll, be, i'll take that energy and i'm like okay we're on a roll here they it's doing good so i'd go to crowded places sit in the back watch people watching it how they're reacting to it and then i'll get that and then i'll now continue and writing and nobody had an idea you wrote that and nobody had an idea man dude my last yeah. last question i know elson has got an appointment Yeah. No, no, it's good. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> Leave this I'm, man alone. This I man has gone through enough. I'm just blown away. The reason I've been on my phone, I've not been chatting with anybody. Oh, serious. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll ask this right after you ask what you want to ask. All right, cool. Just, just my last question, man. Um, uh, Brodies have been telling me things from the time I said I'm going to be doing mm-hmm. this with you today. And uh, mm-hmm. what did that person say? You're heading to Nigeria soon. She oh, pre- my gosh. <laughs> who's who's <laughs> mentioning this guy? <laughs> That is I so deep. low key, man. I dig deep. I dig <gasps> deep. So I, I hear you're <laughs> traveling with. Is it Dinema and one of the top producers, TV producers oh in Zambia, to produce content with Josh Too Funny in yeah, Nigeria? 
yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that is true. Tell that us more is about true. That, so we were uh, man, so um man, like ever since I came back, like I've been on this vibe where I really want to help people. Yeah. I really want people help people grow and expand. So one of the visions that we we had was I want to I, I love Ndine Man's content. Yeah. And he's such a the uh, boy me, has following oh like Oh my man. gosh. Cause he works hard. Ooh. And I said, and I remember when, when Josh came last year and we hosted him, um, he, Josh and I became good friends and he was just like, listen, he was like, he was just like, man, like Nigerians run. Zambians need to start running. <laughs> and if you watch Ndinema, he's a runner. Like yeah, the boy, the boy pushes mount. content. Every week so, he's got content that put, yeah, gives so numbers I, like crazy, I told, man. So Josh and I have been talking about, so I, I'll break it now. Yeah. We want to do a Josh Too Funny show in Zambia, like a proper one. Right. Because he started his world tour. He started in Dublin. He's been doing, he's going to do UK. So we're trying to do a Josh Too Funny show in Zambia. But I told Josh, I asked Josh, I said, listen, can I do something before that? He goes, what is it? I said, I want to come to Nigeria. He's like, you know, you've always been a welcome to Nigeria. I'm like, yeah, but I said, can I bring someone with me? He's like, yeah. oh, I'm like, nah, listen, I'm like, there's this young guy. He creates content. You, he's like, he's, he's kind of like you, man. I'm just like you. I feel like if he comes to Nigeria, it'll, it'll open his mind up to a whole different level. And I oh, feel yeah. like also like what you do, I feel just needs a, like a mentor and different things. So I, I reached out to Ndine and I also talked to the British and that's how we basically have been on that tip. So we're just trying to, we're still, right now we're just gathering the income together and everything to make it happen. But otherwise the door is open. We've talked Caleb, Josh, who's manager, everybody's ready for that trip. So we, we, we've raised yeah. money for other people before. <laughs> Maybe we can raise Let's Ndine raise our money. One day. Stretch your hands, right? <laughs> Touch the screen and receive your blessing. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. you, In conclusion, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, yeah. not ask, oh, but just to put share you on. Something, yeah. Yeah. The one thing that has that I've, I've been blown away by mm. is have you your, heard of open open uh, AI or uh, chat GP, uh, chat um, um fuck what is it hold on give me a second uh -huh. it's yeah. chat GPT no no I don't think so let me tell you something you know the future mm. is actually here. This is sort of like an app. Right. Mm -hmm. However, with this thing, it is so intelligent that people across the world are using it and it learns as you ask it questions. I did this uh, today and yesterday where you can ask it to read a book. Did I right? See that? If the book has got five chapters, and you ask it to write the sixth chapter, it will learn how the person phrases each single word and how they write it and the style that they write it and will write a sixth chapter just as better, just as and good as the continuity. author would have written it. Wow. And it would have just continuity, now, right. Just Where was that app on Game of Thrones season eight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, just saying. Just now, <laughs> just, just so I show you how intelligent this thing is. Uh-huh. I'm going to show you, or I'm just going to say, because um, we're talking about a script, yeah. right? Um, actually, I want you to type this. Take that. I want you to type that. Right. So if we can agree yeah. for this thing to write, say, a comedy or a movie script, uh -huh. and so we have to give it specific keywords. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can pick a few keywords, you can pick a few keywords, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, type that in. So we can say, if I can try and describe him, you can type this. Yeah. Write a movie script about a Zambian gospel artist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that wants to be a comedian. Then you hit send. It'll take one or two seconds, and it'll write an entire movie script. In two seconds. Are you serious? Just wait. No way. It, All right. Write a movie script about a Zambian gospel artist who wants to be a comedian. Yeah. So it'll try and um, let me know when it starts generating it. Yeah, it is generating. Eh. So it says <laughs> intro, church day. We see a close up of a hand playing a guitar. The camera pulls back to reveal a young Zambian gospel artist, Jimmy. 
singing on stage. The congregation is clapping and singing along. Jimmy singing. He's the light in the darkness, the hope in our hearts. With him, we can conquer anything. The song ends and the congregation gives a standing ovation. Jimmy bows and exits the stage. Pick anything that you want. And it's still going. And it's still and going. It's still Cut going. to Jimmy's home day. Jimmy's sitting on his couch, flipping through TV channels. He stops on a stand-up comedy special and watches it intently. Jimmy to himself. Not Jimmy K, right? <laughs> I want to do that. I want to make people laugh. Jimmy thinking to himself. Is it still and it goes on. It's, it's still typing out the script. See? Speaking of Are Jimmy, you what's, what's serious? The, what's the beef so, between you and Jimmy wait, K? Wait, wait, before we, before Jimmy? we go there, actually, uh-huh. yeah. do you see how this thing can change yes. the world? Yeah. Nah. The, the other thing that, because I'm a developer as well, I wrote in this thing, show me a code if I need to write a software that will create um, an accounting software. And it writes the code. It will show you the code. I can be a coder Work now. Easily. So if someone says to you, if someone says, write, write, write me a code of a software that will account my, I don't know, the money that comes. I can actually go station. back to college and write my whole exam through this. Then. Isn't it? Okay. Okay. Now, this I, you, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you not get scared about AI or I think? Do. Nah, I, I, yeah. I, I do. I, I have some weird, I wouldn't say weird. I have some convincing beliefs about w- where AI is coming from and how it's going to come into place. I just, I feel it's going to take over. <laughs> yeah. Because the things that uh, chat uh, GPT can do, if mm-hmm. you ask it for as long as you're specific, yeah. just now as we were talking, the reason I kept going on my phone is I just asked it, can you tell me how, res- how revelation ends? Uh-huh. And it will tell you word for word. This is what revelation. So it will it'll tell you basically in one sentence, this is what revelation is about. Uh-huh. And the ending is about one, two, three, four, five. There was wow. a guy, Jimmy, in that. What's the beef between you and Jimmy, man? There's- oh, no, man. We got no beef, man. There's we no used beef? to. Okay. We used to. Christian beef? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christian beef. <laughs> Which church you go to? <laughs> so Burn no, no, no. no. But, <laughs> but now, um, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy now, like with, uh, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know if there's maybe, I mean, I haven't seen him in a little while, but I mean, he's invited me a few times on his show, yeah. like last year. I find like Jimmy now, like we're really cool because like before we would, we would disagree. Like, of course, the first time so we- So there's, there's no the beef The first right time we beefed was he had- come at us i think for for i think was it pompey doing big brother him mm. at the time was walter mambazi and there was the uh, chola from doxa and you know and it was they had wanted to debate us and christian voice and i remember i was ready then <laughs> my, my pastor was like listen he's like listen imagine if muslims invite you on their t- radio show to debate it's like they're not there to listen <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, yeah, you know true. so i said okay let's meet in private so we met in private we met at uh, at the time and Pompey's description of it was like, everyone when they met was like, hey, brothers, how you going? with you? And then I was like, you, you, and you. <laughs> and I was, they thought I was going to be cool about it, but yeah. I was so annoyed because again, at the same time, like I was very protective over the growth of the guys around me because I felt like, why are you attacking these guys? And we, we had heavy debates. They would always pop up different things. People would see sub- like, ah, why is he taking subliminals? But I think, I don't know, just like last maybe two years, one year, him and I have actually really become like really cool. You know what I'm saying? Like right. we, he's invited me on his show. I think people are still dwelling on some old beef. Cause yeah, yeah. We, we really, we hit it off. Like, cause I've been on his show like maybe three times. You Sometimes you hit me up like, oh, what are you doing tonight? Okay, I've got this topic. Like he likes to invite me when we're talking yeah. about mental health or different things like yeah, men's some, discussion. Some lady today, yeah. uh, I was at the mall. Yeah. And I, I told this lady, no, I'm just, uh, sorry, I, I need to, Drive yeah. past here. I'm, I'm rushing for this interview. We're having Abel Chungo next on uh, yeah. two episodes from now. Yeah. It says, please ask him about the beef they're having. <laughs> him, and, him and Jimmy K. No, no, so no, apparently no, like, you posted something. Jimmy K responded saying, bro, you said don't call me bro. And no. That's Slap D. That's Slap D. That's Slap D. That's Slap D. No, no, said. no, no. Wait, but, Jimmy K also had beef with her. Who's, who's, who's the guy? Ephraim. Oh, it's, it's, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, like, but, but, but Jimmy has had beef with a lot of different people before, man. <laughs> like, like Jimmy, Jimmy is a gospel uh, artist. Jim, my, 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 my guy's, yeah. yeah so I try, so. Looks like I he try has beef with gospel artists, huh? I, I try to step away from it, but now he, now I think with, with his show, 
I think maybe now, because I, I realize why I'm saying like I get along with him now. Because I now, I think he now he feels sometimes of the attacks that come on him because of the topics that he picks for his right, show. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was, and that was much of the, that's the way he used to be a lot, like before, right? Yeah. So I don't know what changed, but at the end of the day, like you can actually have like real, like I'd, I have better conversations with Jimmy now than I did before. Uh, so okay. I, I don't have any beef with, with Jimmy. No, I listen, if you wear as many suits as he does, you'll have the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a suit for just 10 minutes and My he felt changed. like he could run this hotel. My walk changed. Giving people instructions and shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, it's been real, man. Nice having you. This and, has so much, arguably man. been the longest episode we've had. It is. Jeez. About 2 hours and 20 minutes, man. Yeah, what? 12 and 26. Wow. Oh, snap. Yeah, almost man. one and a half hours. Yeah. Wow. But it's been great, man. It's been great. Thank you for coming through. Awesome. Yeah. And I think it's gone better than we expected. Hey. Yeah. Are those contacts? Yes. So do you have eye problems or those are very like fashion? bad eyesight? So why, why don't very you? Very bad eyesight. Okay, so I, uh -huh. I don't like telling people what to do, just like I don't like pe uh -huh. people telling me how to dress, but there's there's eye contacts that mess that your eye color. Mm -hmm. I, you I've purposely had those. got. Yeah, so I've had. Well, I mean. What, you I, like to stand out? Yeah, I mean, I, I think these how are. How is the Christian community taking that? Nah, <laughs> they, ne they never used to take it well, but now, now, now I've got people just like that. You died here. People think it's. Braided. Okay. How's the Christian community well, the taking that? The first time? <laughs> the first time? <laughs> No, Man, we need to go. We need the, to go. The first time was painful. <laughs> the first time was painful. That's what yeah. she said. The perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Please cut this man's mic. So, I know. Right? All I'm just saying is, um, <laughs> all I'm just saying is, I, the first time it was bad, man, because like. There was a way I'd wanted to introduce it. Like, yeah. I think the first time was funny because the, there was a way I'd wanted to introduce it. So I dyed my hair. I'm like, I grew up in, my, in a home where my dad was like, wouldn't allow us to do that. And it was like, when you guys have your own home. You do <laughs> so it. when I had my own home, I was like, ah, ah. Finally. So when I did it, um, I posted up. I, was, I made the mistake of, I should have went. I went to do like a proper photo shoot. Really dope photo shoot. Shout out to Vince. And then the problem is I took a... I took a little video of it, right? Like just kind of talking about like, hey, and like I dyed my hair, like, and I talked about like openly about some of the struggle, like the idea or the fear of doing it that was before. And people were like, oh, that's really cool. The problem is the first thing is, um, I, I don't see him post a lot anymore, but it was, uh, what's his name? Wapi. Yeah. So Wapi <laughs> got, got a Lord screenshot yeah. of that. Got a screenshot of that. And you see, the thing is, I think, being a comedian, it helps me understand like, okay, all right, I, I, I understand comedic shots, right? So he took a picture of that and it was actually funny because he said, uh, he put a caption, it's like, <laughs> he says, uh, <laughs> dear Lord, it's me, your child. And then God, then God, then God is like, ah, yes, me beauty. <laughs> it's like, no, it's me, Abel. And then God's like, yeah. <laughs> Is that's the first one that he took a screenshot and it didn't look good. It's just like he took a screenshot of you of the recording yeah. and just then adds a caption on it. And oh my gosh, after oh, that funny. it was like, oh, and and um, yeah. But then for me, it stopped being funny when I think because my wife also had dyed hair and it's like when people now started getting hair picked, I was like, ah, you know what? This is like becoming uncomfortable. Yeah. Like now, you're now looking at people's profiles and trying to find out where they live, <laughs> where they work. Yeah. And when it gets to that level, you're just like, ah, you know what? Cut. Let me just, let me just. So that's one of the reasons why I've been, that's one of the reasons why I don't, I just pulled up even my family pictures and different things. I was just like, ah, let's. Hey, but we will go <laughs> for hours if we don't stop right now. Yeah, I appreciate it's been real, it. Man. It's been nice having you. Thank you for and having me. And everybody else, remember to click that subscribe button. It's yeah. red for a reason to make it more visible. Yeah. Click on that. So, what is. Oh, so, periods? <laughs> You've blocked him. So, yeah. Till the next so, episode, have a lovely day. Also, I'm cutting your microphone. Yeah, no, no. I just want to talk about. I want to plug the hotel because we didn't do that enough. Yeah, yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, how, do, how do I pronounce this hotel? Le Elementos. Yeah. Amazing food. I had stuffed chicken. That was amazing. All right, cool people. Elson is my name. That's the college dropout. Oh, my level's up. Okay, cool. <laughs> Cheers.